conquering the path to which he entrusted his faith. Becoming the strongest is such a trivial goal. Now the guy was fighting with some huge monster. The monster was clearly losing to him and called this guy. The guy just laughed. He has already killed a lot of his relatives. The monster asked him that for what purpose did he come here. He came here suddenly and mercilessly killed his relatives. To which the guy replied that it was nothing special. There is no reason at all. This made the monster very angry and he called him names again. After that, he dared to attack him again. The guy thought it was a shame, but he thought that a dark lord like him would understand his feelings, that the higher power is the root of their desolation. For him, the dark lord, whom many fear, he rejected him, calling him a monster, and then he thought that he would understand. The monster called the guy a monster and told him to go to hell. The guy swung his sword at him and said that they would see each other in the afterlife. After that, he killed that monster. He thought that maybe this was his last battle. For killing this monster, he received a reincarnation crystal. The rank of this crystal was SSS. The guy beat his sword and thought that it was so long ago, and now he is finally free. From the creatures that kept and tamed him, he used this stone and thought that he would finally be able to reincarnate in the distant future. It was just a dream, he was just sleeping. His name is Yuri Aizawa. He's just an ordinary office worker who was born in a country called Japan. According to his memories, he reincarnated into another world one time when he was over 30 years old. And his one life, it was just incredibly interesting here. Use magic for the first time in a fantasy world. Anyway, Yuri was very happy that he could do magic. And so, he tried so hard to learn different types of spells. And when he finally realized what was going on, they were already calling him the Emperor of Magic. To his life, since he had already reached the highest level of magic, he decided to try his hand at fencing. He wanted to become the strongest swordsman and defeat all the terrible creature that people called the Dark Lord. And when he once again realized what was happening, they already called him the God of Swords. Although many people may consider this life a perfect and fulfilling life. However, the truth is not always what it seems. Day after day, fighting for the sake of others, he could not find the slightest sign of joy in his life. Eventually, people began to think of him as a monster. That's why Yura decided that in his next life he would live for himself and only for himself. Then he woke up. He thought, where is he? It's so dark in here. After finally, he was able to see the place he found himself in. He thought, what kind of place is this? And more importantly, who is he? Why did he sleep here? He doesn't remember anything. Not far from here. He saw a small puddle and looked into it, seeing his reflection there. Yuri shuddered and thought that he remembered. Is that how he got here? Tired of fighting in countless wars, he used the reincarnation crystal. Fortunately, everything turned out just fine. This place, it looks very much like the ruins of a building. Then someone called out to him and asked who the hell he was. Yuri turned around and saw a huge goblin. It was a goblin lord of rank V. Yuri shuddered and thought that this creature was two meters tall. Then the smaller goblins pulled up. Goblins began to arrive more and more. Yuri sensed something was wrong and thought it might be. Are these ruins a goblin lair or something? Then the goblin lord told him to listen here, calling him an uninvited guest. It's pretty brave of him to invade their territory. Yuri thought that he really didn't want anything bad. He knows when he realized where he was, it happened. The goblin lord chuckled and asked that he was really going to fight all of them. What can he do when he doesn't even have a weapon? Yuri thought that the weapon, that's it. If you think about it, in his previous lives, people called him the sword god because he could use any type of item as a sword. He looked around and noticed a stick that was lying next to him. He thought he was wondering if there was anything here that he could use. When he took this stick in his hands, a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that a skill called fencing, beginner had been obtained. A skill called fencing, intermediate was obtained and a skill called fencing, advanced was also obtained. After reading all this, Yuri was surprised and thought that all he was doing was holding a stick, and his previous experience comes back to him. At that moment, the goblin lords commanded their army to capture Yuri, and then Yuri had to fight with them. He attacked one of the goblins, who had already attacked him. The guy was surprised and thought that his body really acted on its own. After that, he began to deal further with all the goblins who attacked him, and thought that this was very good. All his feelings are starting to come back. The goblin lords realized that things were bad and shouted that they should all retreat. They would regroup and come back later. Yuri thought that the memory inside him was telling him that he couldn't let them go. So he ran after the goblin lord and asked where he was going. He caught up with him in the blink of an eye and thought that now he remembered. Before, when he was the god of swords, there was a technique that he often used. 
and he called it a flash. Apparently, he used it now, and then he defeated the Goblin Lord. Seeing this, all the goblins began to run away in horror in different directions. Yuri said they couldn't escape him. After that, he began to catch up with everyone and destroy them. He thought that even though there were only four of them left, if even one of them left and called for reinforcements, the situation would become unpleasant. After he killed all the goblins, he asked, is this really all they can do? After that, he had a system email. His acquired skills and all the characteristics were written there. His passive skill is the memory of the magic emperor, the memory of the god of swords. Active skills, swordsmanship, advanced. The memory of the emperor's magic is SSS rank. The speed of learning magic increases by 100 times. And also thanks to this memory, the speed of learning fencing also increases by 100 times. Yuri thought, what does he see? So it's because of his passive skill called memory of the god of swords, just holding a wooden stick. He was able to learn an advanced swordsmanship ability. Being both the god of swords and the emperor of magic, he thinks that experience follows him. But then he remembered something and thought that the ability to own these two abilities at the same time. Is this a small rarity even for this world? Is the blood that flows in him also the blood of a magic swordsman? Yuri looked very thoughtful. After he defeated all the goblins, he decided to take a walk. He saw the bag and the sword that was lying next to him, and said, what should he do now? After defeating all those goblins, he borrowed a lot of items from them, including dried meat as well as some supplies, and also that very sword. He certainly didn't look very good. He picked it up and, starting to twist it, wondered if it was possible to use it at all. It's almost no different from the stick he used before. And then he received a new system alert, which said that a skill called analysis was received. Yuri didn't look surprised at all and asked what the analysis was. And I thought, what is it? But I decided to try it anyway, and applied his skill. After that, he began to see all the characteristics of objects that were nearby. He saw that the sword he was holding in his hands was an F-rank bronze sword. State, G it is difficult to use and difficult to repair. He looked up into the sky and saw a bird. With the help of his analysis, he realized that this is a copper pheasant, which is three years old. He looked at the tree and thanks to this skill, he saw that it was a green sawtooth oak, ancient tree, which is 107 years old. Yuri was delighted and said that this, of course, is a very convenient skill. However, it really annoys him. He looked around again and thought that, but there was only grass and trees. It would be nice if there was at least a hint that pointed to a city nearby. Then he heard some rustling in the bushes. Slime crawled out. Yuri immediately pointed his sword at him and asked if he should kill him. Hearing this creature, it was very scared. But seeing how this creature was scared of him, Yuri exhaled and thought that it was better not. After all, it seems that he is not hostile. After that, he stopped paying attention to it, and I said that it should definitely be here. He took out a piece of food and handed it to this creature and asked if he wanted to eat. The creature began to greedily eat this piece. Yuri thought that it really wasn't an enemy after all. Then a system alert came in which it was written that the skill, Taming, Novice was received. On the way out, Taming, Intermediate was obtained. Skill, Taming, Advanced has been obtained. Yuri was surprised and said that, so she even has such skills as Taming. He thought that, by the way, this screen condition is quite strange. Can it be used as a shield? The system also informed him that Taming, Advanced Rank B also allows him to communicate with various monsters. Yuri wondered if Taming allowed him to communicate with monsters. He remembered that monster and thought that it was understandable. Then he went on. But that creature did not want to stay alone and began to shout something to him. Yuri stopped and looked questioningly at this creature. He thought it was just his imagination. Or did he not want to part? It seems that he can understand his feelings thanks to the taming skill. After that, he bent down to this creature and said that it was okay. From now on, his name is Lime. And I asked Lime if he wanted to go with him. Hearing this, Lime was very happy. Apparently, he was very much in agreement with this. Yuri thought that although he is not sure in what situations Slime can be useful, but it is without a doubt his one companion in this world. It was already evening, so Yuri decided to make a fire. But he didn't do it very well. He thought that from his memory of his previous life, he thinks that it is possible to get fire by doing something like this. But, after many attempts, he finally managed to make a fire. After he did this, he again had a system alert in which it was said that the skill, fire magic, beginner was received. Skill, fire magic, intermediate has been obtained. Skill, fire magic, advanced has been obtained. At this moment, just the same, where did you come back from Lime? Seeing him, Yuri said that he was welcome back. He thanked him for his help and, handing him a piece of food, asked if he wanted to eat. Lime immediately rushed to him for food. Yuri laughed. 
After that, he began to fry meat. After it was ready, Yuri tried it and said that it was not bad. He asked Lime what he liked too. Lime answered him something to this, but Yuri understood him and said that he understood. Then they saw that birds were flying in the sky, and there were a lot of them. Yuri raised his head and asked, what is it? Something very strange was happening in the forest. Yuri immediately tensed up and stood up. The wolf was running from the monster and shouting at him to stay away from him. Yuri looked surprised and immediately applied the analysis. This monster was an F-rank shadow. It was a monster that was weak against magic. And the beast that ran from this monster was Pancho Panther. Gender is male. Race, lycanthrope. Age, 32 years. Yuri thought that shadow monsters are weak to magic. Maybe he should save him. But he stopped himself and thought that maybe he was running in order to fulfill some conditions in order to get a new skill. Perhaps, but still he couldn't stand it and join this beast. So now he was running alongside him. The beast, seeing him, was frightened and asked when it was him. Yuri apologized to him for the suddenness. The beast asked what he wanted. Yuri asked if he needed help. The beast couldn't stand it and shouted that didn't he see it. He had to do something. After that, Yuri fired fire bullets into the shadow. There was a huge explosion. Yuri thought that this was his mistake, because he used too much force. When the beast saw Yuri's strength, it got scared and shouted that there was another monster, after which it ran away. But Yuri caught up with him without any problems and told him to wait for him, because he has a lot of questions for him. The animals did not expect this in any way and asked when it was him. Yuri thought that at last he had managed to meet at least someone. He can't let this precious source of information go away. But the beast was not going to talk to him and ran even faster. There was no problem for Yuri to catch up with him. After some time, the beast finally ran out of steam. The beast apologized to him and said it was his fault. Just let him save his life. Then they finally got stronger around the campfire and decided to have a normal conversation. Yuri asked what he was saying, that he was not running for this. The beast said that of course. Is it obvious that he was running away? He almost lost his life just now. What else could it be? Yuri asked what the fulfillment of the conditions for obtaining a new skill could be. The beast said that there are no skills that can be obtained so easily. As a rule, they have to train for many years in order to learn at least one. Yuri thought that's how it happens. So it's really thanks to the memories of his previous life that he can learn the skills so easily. The beast said that, judging by his expression. Otherwise he really doesn't have the slightest idea about it. And who is he really? He has been an adventurer for almost 10 years, but this is the first time he has met someone as powerful as him. Yuri thought that he realized that his magic is the top class in this world. He had no idea about the standard level of magic power of this world. And I asked the beast that, by the way, why was he wandering around here at such a late time? The beast immediately jumped up and said that he was framed. He was obviously very angry and clenching his hand into a fist, said that it was as if he would wander here of his own free will. He was a porter in a squad led by a man named Zack. There was a fair amount of trust between them. However, the moment they faced a formidable opponent, Zack's attitude changed. Seeing the monster, Zack just rushed to the leak because he was scared. The beast rushed after him but stumbled and fell. Zack didn't help him and ran on. The beast said that in order to save the squad, no, in order to save himself, he used him as bait. Yuri listened to him and said that's what happened and asked that the strong monster he was talking about, was it something like this? Just then, a huge monster flew across the sky. Yuri pointed just the same at him. Seeing his animals, he was very scared and screamed. Yuri told him to stop being such a bore, and I thought that he was already trying to pretend that he hadn't noticed. He looked at that flying monster again and thought that he definitely realized that they were seeing him now. It looked like he was going to attack them after they fell asleep. Then what should he do? Fire magic does not guarantee hitting him at the speed at which he falls. The beast asked him what he was thinking about. What can he do with this piece of shit? Yuri decided to confront this monster with his sword, which he found among the goblins. At that moment, the monster was already flying straight at them. The beast got scared and said it was already here. And then Yuri attacked this monster with his sword. The blow turned out to be very powerful, and the monster flew away. The beast did not expect this in any way and asked, what the hell just happened here? At this moment, Yuri received a system alert again, in which it was said that the skill, strengthening magic, beginner was received. Skill, magic enhancement, intermediate has been obtained. Skill, magic enhancement, advanced has been obtained. After that, his sword fell apart into small pieces. Yuri thought that this was very bad, even though it took so much effort to get this sword. But there's nothing to be done, he hit him instead of cutting him. Then he turned to the beast that was supposed to be sitting behind him and asked, By the way, where did this guy go? Lime answered him something. 
Yuri said that, and he hoped that he would bring him to the city. Meanwhile, that beast was already running far away in the forest and shouting that he was a monster. He won in the blink of an eye with a crappy sword. Morning came and finally they woke up. Yuri was currently engaged in butchering the monster he killed last night. Lime was hovering at his feet and saying something to him. Yuri told him to wait a little longer. He thought that yesterday, after killing this monster, he dragged it into the corpse to where he first saw it, and now he's looping the corpse. If he roasts his meat with fire magic, then he can use it for emergency rations. However, after yesterday's fight, his sword broke, and he had been chopping it with a sharp stone since morning, and he's finally almost done. There's still quite a bit left. Speaking of which, when did he wake up this morning? He immediately received an alert from the system, in which it was written that the skill, non-elementary magic beginner was received. Yuri only woke up then, and when he saw it, he asked what it was. He thought it looked like if he kept working with this new body, he would automatically acquire new skills. He doesn't know much about this new skill, but he is sure that there will be time to use it. And he said that it was good there was still quite a bit left. And then he found a huge crystal in the body of this monster. It was a fire magic stone. A large rank be a large magic stone that is imbued with the power of fire. Deliver it. Yuri said he would probably sell it for a lot as soon as he got to the city. Lime started squeaking something to him. Yuri asked if he really needed this stone. Lime answered him something to that. And Yuri thought it didn't matter. In fact, he may not even sell it for a high price. So he said okay, fine and gave this crystal to Lime. Lime immediately absorbed it and increased in size. Now he was several times bigger than Yuri himself. But, apparently, Yuri was a little disappointed and asked that he got bigger and that's it. Is this really serious? If it's just that eating the magic stone only makes it bigger. But then Lime began to change its shape and took the form of the same monster. Yuri did not expect this in any way, so he was very surprised and asked that he could transform in order to look like other monsters, right? After that, Lime even took off. Yuri thought that he not only looks like another monster, he imitates the entire skeletal and muscular structure of the original. After flying a small circle, Lime landed next to Yuri again. After that, Yuri climbed on his back, and they took off again. Yuri said it was so cool, and I thought that now that Lime has evolved, it's time to go to a new city, so they will get to the village quickly. After what time of the flight, Yuri asked Lime if he needed a break. Lime answered him something to that and then they continued their flight. Yuri thought that it was fine, let him not lose speed, and they would soon reach the city. And then, just the same, they saw a small town, and Yuri said that here he was. But they can't fly to the city like this. He is almost sure that people will be very much frightened by the appearance of the basilisk. And I asked Lime to land here for a minute. When Lime landed, Yuri got off his back and asked if he could return to his original size. And after that Lime didn't say anything to him, he took his form. But now it's even smaller. Yuri said that it can even decrease. How convenient it is. And I laughed to myself and thought that it is also compatible with Lime. He slapped himself on the shoulder and told Lime to come in here for a while. He thought that the city that this big-eared guy was talking about was a radial trading city. When he went inside this city, he saw a lot of people and different creatures there. He thought, what is going on here? Why does the city look so sad? Then some woman shouted that the prices here are very cheap. They won't believe it, let them come and look. Cold water for only 300 gil. Hearing this, Yuri thought that, by the way, he had not drunk anything since yesterday. He approached this woman and said he wanted some. The woman greeted him and said that he was welcome. There are three cup sizes, large, medium and small. Which one does he need? After looking at these glasses, he said he looked so good. He took out some coins and thought that although he wasn't sure about the value of this world currency, he thought it would still be enough, and asked the woman if she could sell him as much as she can. After that, the woman got him the smallest cup and said that great, that's all he can get. Yuri said it was so expensive. The woman asked that it looked like he came from far away, didn't he? So she pointed her finger to the side and told him there was a well over there. In the real, the sun shines all day. That's exactly why the price of water is growing day by day. Yuri thought he understood. The woman laughed and said that thanks to this condition, those who can use water magic like her, then they have a great chance to earn a lot of money. After that, Yuri went on. The following customers have already approached the woman. Apparently, they have already come to her, because the woman asked what the size is, as usual, isn't it? Yuri thought that's why people in the city look so sluggish. He drank his small glass and thought that this was not enough, a few drops of water would not help at all. Then he had a system alert, which said that the skill, water magic and, novice was received. Skill, water magic, intermediate has been obtained. Skill, water magic, advanced has been obtained. 
The woman turned to him again and asked how he was doing. This little cup isn't enough, is it? She looked at him and said that his clothes looked quite strange. If he gave her these clothes, she would give him the biggest glass of water. And I asked him, well, what? Doesn't he think she's being too generous? But Yuri turned away and said he thought he was fine. And thanked her. He just has a solution to the problem of water shortage in this city. The woman asked what the hell he had just said. Yuri went to this well and thought that he would look at everything now. This is the first and last time in his life when he buys water. After that, he used his water magic. Everyone who was in the square was delighted. Water started dripping from the sky. People were very happy. They even started crying from happiness. They shouted that they couldn't even believe it. They started shouting to bring some buckets in order to get water, it's just amazing. But the woman behind the counter apparently was not very happy about it. She called out to Yuri. Yuri looked at her and said that as she could see, he was just using magic. She can use it too, can't she? He thought he thought she would be happy. By this time, Yuri was already hungry. He clutched his stomach and thought that his stomach was empty and he had no money now. Even the strongest reincarnated person can't do anything, can he? He was already so tired of eating a basilisk. He began to look around and look at the delicious food. He thought it took him so long to get to the city, but he has no money. He approached some man next to this man. A system window was highlighted in which it was written that his name was Alex Rodriguez. Race is human, gender is male. Age, 33 years. Yuri, apparently, approached him in order to find a job. Alex looked at him and asked, what's the job? Yuri asked that he was still hiring workers. Alex said to find a job for him. Unfortunately, he's not in the mood for that right now. And then he pointed to a huge stone and asked him if he could see it. This problem, he is a carpenter and they were going to build a house on a vacant lot. But two days ago, this heavy stone suddenly fell right on this place, and he can't do anything but postpone all his plans. If this continues, then the nobleman who put the responsibility on him will be very angry, and find a job for him. He thinks it's better to ask someone else. Yuri didn't listen to him any further, just walked past him and said that it was, he said that if he pulled the stone out of this place, he would present him with the work, wouldn't he? Alex said yes, but then the meaning of the words came to him and asked what? What did he just say? Yuri looked at him and said that it was quite fair. After that, he walked up to this huge stone and activated the magic enhancement. Alex didn't understand what Yuri was trying to do and asked what he was doing. Yuri said it was something like a spell. Alex scratched his head and said that the spell, yeah, but the stone has already begun to crack slowly. Yuri thought, okay, that should be enough. After that, he shouted to the men that this place would be dangerous. That's why he advises them to stay away from here. Alex apparently didn't like it very much and said he told him to stay away. He's actually really busy right now. If he wants to play, then let him get out. But then, with just one click, Yuri destroyed this huge boulder. Alex and his team were shocked. Did he shout that it was so cool? This giant stone, and in just one second, it's just unbelievable. Yuri thought, what does it mean in this world they don't know about magic enhancement, right? Alex told him that fortunately for them, he appeared, and now they can continue their work, and thanked him for it. Yuri was very happy about this. Alex asked that he was looking for a job, wasn't he? Well, they'll look now. If he's already that strong, then how about trying to become an adventurer? Or he can give him carpentry work, okay. Yuri looked very surprised and thought that he was really recalling some memories from his past life about this. Adventurers earn money by completing a request from the guild, from asking to just find a lost cat to destroying monsters. In conclusion, an adventurer is very different from a magician and a swordsman, and I need to obey no commands. They are free to do whatever they like and he said he was an adventurer. Alex said that if he didn't mind, Putin would let him take him to the guild. Yuri asked what, but can he? And thanked him for it. And he asked to be treated, okay. But then Alex told him that if he wanted to be an adventurer, he advised him to stop talking so formally. He should not underestimate the work of an adventurer. That's why usually none of the adventurers speak so politely. And he also has to remove that cute face. He is very strong, and he cannot always bow to someone and behave too formally, otherwise he will never move forward even a step. Yuri held out his hand to him and said that he understood, and then he would speak more casually. Alex shook his hand and said that this was a real adventurer. After that, Alex escorted him to the guild. They had already approached the building, and the man said that well, this is the adventurer's guild. After that, Yuri said goodbye to Alex. He thought, okay, a lot of things happened while he was getting to this place, but his journey to a new world begins right now. After Alex persuaded him to become an adventurer, he asked him to take him to the Adventurer's Guild. On the second day after his rebirth, he finally moves forward and becomes an adventurer. 
He went inside the guild and found himself in a spacious hall. He thought, is this really the adventurer's guild? He doesn't know why, but this atmosphere reminds him of something close to him. Then a man called out to him and called him a skinny guy. He said that his appearance, he's a rookie, isn't he? Yuri wanted to say something, but the man interrupted him and said what a coincidence. Now they are looking for a porter. Does he want to join them? Of course, the price after the missy will be divided equally. Isn't that a good thing? He was really lucky. After all, opportunities like this don't always fall out. This way, he will earn much more money. Instead of doing the task yourself, he patted him on the shoulder and told him to just agree. At that moment, Yuri remembered the words of Alex, who told him not to underestimate the career of an adventurer. And now Yuri thought that now he understands everything. He grabbed the rude man by the hand and said that with all due respect and comma he refuses. After that, he walked away from them and thought that he had decided that in this life he would live for himself, on his own. He will never serve anyone. The man he shook hands with so hard asked what the hell. The man who was next to him asked that he had muscles just for show, or what. Then he approached the girl at the reception desk. She greeted him. In front of him, as always, the system window was highlighted, in which it was written that this girl's name was Tiffany Grise. The race is feline. Gender is female. Age, 17 years. Yuri told her that he wanted to work here as an adventurer. Tiffany asked that he wants to register correctly. But could he show her what his rank was? Yuri asked what rank. The girl said that yes, it has become much more difficult to register as an adventurer lately. They don't accept anyone without prior rank as an adventurer. So that's why he has to talk about some of his achievements. Yuri thought that although he was the emperor of magic and the god of swords in his previous lives, but he didn't have the slightest proof to make them believe him. The girl added that they would also accept any rare skills he might have. Yuri pondered and wondered if analyzing and enhancing magic could be listed as rare skills. Since he has only been in this world for two days, he does not know what is rare and what is not. So he said he probably didn't have any rare skills. The girl said that then it would be very difficult for them to accept it. Yuri thought it was a carpenter. He was told that an adventurer is a job that people come and go to every single day. Anyone can register. Yuri wanted to say something, but then someone interrupted him and asked what was the matter. An elderly man came out to them. The girl called him Mr. Galio. Did she tell Yuri to wait a minute? This man's name is Galileo Figaro. Race, human gender, male and age, 41 years. The girl told him the whole situation. After listening to her, the man asked what? How can they accept a man like him? This will seriously affect the glory of their guild. The girl agreed with him and said yes, but they can't let him just leave like that. Galileo looked at Yuri and said that in that case. After that, they brought Yuri to some equipment. The girl apologized to him for making him wait. Yuri looked at this thing and asked, what is it? The girl explained to him that it was called a magic meter. The device allows them to measure its capabilities and convert them into numbers. He should just add his magic power to it, and this device will automatically display the relative number. If the number is greater than 30, then it will be suitable for being an adventurer. Over 50, that means he has talent. More to become. This means that he can immediately register to be an adventurer. A whole crowd gathered to see how Yuri would try his strength. They began to whisper and one of them told them to look. It looks like this guy is going to try out a device called a magic counter. Someone told him that he missed him so much. Once upon a time he used it. Yuri looked at them and thought that these people are. It's the first time he sees all the bands here definitely complement each other. Only the strongest can survive. To sum up, it's like show them your strength. It's quite interesting. He told the girl he had a question. He asked what this device is, won't it be broken if the measurement exceeds 100, right? The girl laughed and said it wasn't a problem. The maximum is 99.99, so he doesn't have to worry about it. He doesn't have to worry about things like breakage. Yuri said he understood. Galileo told him to worry all he wanted. But shouldn't he first get over 100 before saying these things? Yuri said that in this case he is ready to try right now. Then he put his hand on this machine. Everyone shuddered and began to watch carefully. After that, everyone was scared and Galileo asked what was going on. They began to observe how much Yuri's strength was. The girl said 100, 200, 1000, 3000. And it's still growing, isn't it? What is it? In the end, this machine still broke down. Everyone was just terrified. Yuri said he was very sorry, but he definitely broke down. The girl said that it just can't be. Galileo thought it was unbelievable. It really just can't be. Yuri asked if he could be an adventurer now. Galileo looked at him again and said that it was fine. Apparently, he claims to participate in the tournament. Yuri thought that the tournament, the man told him to follow him. 
Yuri thought that didn't they say that if he scored more than 100 points, he could become an adventurer. After which, he followed this man. Galileo walked in front and said that just in time, the official competition would start in a few minutes. Yuri thought that the carpenter said that his last registration was 10 years ago. Has the information changed now? Then the man opened the door and they went out into the courtyard. He said they had come. The participants of this tournament were already there, and Yuri thought that he was just in time for the campaign. Galileo stopped and shouted for them to be ready, because the exam would start in five minutes. Yuri thought that this means that this bearded man is also a judge, isn't it? It looks like he's not very strong, whether everything will be fine. No, he can't judge a book by its cover alone. In his past life, he had heard that subjectivity is man's greatest enemy. Then a girl turned to him. She asked him that he looks like it's his first exam, is that right? This girl's name is Philly Arnett. Race, human, gender, female, age, 15 years. The girl told him her name was Philly, but he could call her Phil. Yuri said he was Yuri. Phil said that Yuri, his name sounds kind of weird. Had she never heard of such a name? Yuri thought it was amazing. He remembered Alex and thought that he thought adventurers would be like him, or those he met in the guild itself. He looked at Phil and thought, which means that things are not always as he imagines. He asked that she had been involved in this before. The girl laughed and said yes. In fact, this is already her seven times when she takes part. Yuri asked that why is she participating eight times? Is she a test lover or something? Phil laughed and said he was so interesting. The reason is obvious. That's because she failed all seven times. Yuri said it was just. He looked at the guys who were standing nearby and thought that judging by what she said, comma, the adventurer's path seems he looked at the guys who were standing nearby and thought that judging by what she said, the adventurer's path seems difficult. He looked at the guys who were standing nearby and thought that judging by what she said, the path of an adventurer seems difficult. The tests for adventurers are clearly different from the others. Phil told him that. But, this exam got even harder after they changed the examiner to this old man. Yuri looked at this old man who was now talking to some man. Galileo told the man to be careful with Yuri. You have to be very careful. The man said it was fine. Yuri tensed slightly and thought, what will this bearded man do? It was he who asked to use the magic meter. What was he up to? At that moment, Galileo shouted and said that the time had come. The exam officially starts right now. One test is the art of swordsmanship. This is a very simple rule. The one who can surprise him with his skills will pass. He asked, well, what? Isn't it very simple? And he said that I, the first participant, took a step forward. The man came out and said that yes, he would try his best. One of the judges shouted that they had started. After that, this man began to fight with the old man. Everyone's eyes popped out and began to watch this with surprise. Did someone say that it's so great? The judge is not so terrible. The old man asked this guy what, where is all his energy? This guy was clearly losing to him right now. Yuri decided to analyze them. His analysis said that the sword in the old man's hands is a shock sword. Rank, B. this sword can spread its effect on contact. In the hands of that man was a bronze sword. Rank, F, this is an ordinary sword that is commonly used by adventurers. Yuri thought that the strength between these two is relatively the same. But because of the quality of the sword, he lost. At that moment, the old man cut this guy's sword in half. The old man said one punch. He'll be next, so let him come out here. The guy with the black hair. Yuri frowned and thought that oh, isn't number two next. But then he remembered something and thought that he hadn't brought a sword with him. It's not good. He's taking a fencing test, but he didn't bring a sword with him. He turned to Phil and asked what if the opponent forgot to take a sword with him, what would happen then? Hearing this, the girl was horrified and asked what. Yuri looked at her and thought that this was not good. Then Yuri decided to approach the guy who had just fought with this old man. He said if he could help him a little. He pointed to his sword and asked if he could lend him this sword for a few minutes. The guy said it was fine. And I asked him what, but what does he want to do with this broken sword? Yuri didn't say anything to him, just thanked him for lending him the sword. The guy immediately jumped to his feet and shouted at him to wait. Let him just not talk about. The old man laughed. He asked that he was using it. Wasn't it a broken sword? And also said he had a warning for him. If some kind of accident happens, Yuri said he shouldn't feel guilty or anything like that. He should just hurry up and start right now. The old man laughed and told him not to regret it later and called him a scoundrel, after which he rushed straight at him. But Yuri just stood there. He looked very calm, unlike the two who were watching him. The old man had already swung his sword at him and said checkmate. But then Yuri looked at him with his terrifying gaze, shuddered and asked, what the hell is this? Yuri thought he had heard about it. Not only people, but also animals have a habit of freezing when they are scared. He asked this old man if he was okay. 
It looks like he's not feeling well, doesn't it? But the old man decided not to give up and swung at him again. Yuri was moving very fast and was already behind this old man. He asked him if he really wanted to continue, but that old man dropped his sword and said he had lost. The audience said how great it was. Did they not believe their eyes? After that, everyone surrounded Yuri. Yuri thought that only later did he find out that the fencing examiner was replaced by someone because Mr. Galileo got sick, allowing everyone to pass without a test. Yuri was congratulated for having passed the first stage. Yuri thanked him and asked how much time was left before the start of stage 2, to which he was told that it would start in about 10 minutes. Julius thought that stage 1 was over, despite some flaws, now he just needs to pass stage 2 and he can officially become an adventurer. Then Phil ran up to him. So after that they went to take the second stage. And it will be dedicated to magic. Phil was already crying and said she did it. She finally passed stage 1. Yuri congratulated her. The girl said it was all thanks to him. Yuri looked at the girl in surprise and asked what, thanks to him. Phil said that after he passed the first stage, the judge suddenly felt bad, and that's why the competition could not continue. And because of this unexpected situation, they all passed stage 1. Yuri thought that how could they call it the passage of stage 1? Who is this girl? I warned him and said that, but in stage 2 he should be very careful. If the rumors are true, then the next magic test. But then they were called by a man who came up to them. It was Magnus Figueros, race, human, gender, male, age, 43 years. He said that, well, now they will move on to the next competition. Yuri thought that the chances of him passing the test were getting lower and lower. After that, they went down to the basement of the guild, to the training area. When everyone gathered, the man said that now he would explain the rules of stage 2. They can only use magic and whoever can break this thing will pass this round. He threw some kind of cube on the floor, and he also said that the deadline is before sunset. He asked that it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yuri thought it was easier than he thought. That old man called out to Yuri and thanked him for taking care of his brother in stage 1. But at this stage he will not have the slightest chance to win, because he will make him feel pain. Yuri did not pay attention to his words and thought that this judge and the previous brothers were like that. At this moment, the man announced the beginning of stage 2. Yuri looked around and asked the girl that the reason everyone looks so shocked is that it's very easy, isn't it? But Phil was very scared and shouted that no. She said that this stage, everyone thinks that it is impossible to pass from the very beginning. Yuri thought it didn't look like she was lying. In that case, maybe this thing is made of some special material. At that moment, some guy used a fireball to destroy this thing. But it didn't work out, he swore and said it didn't work. After that, they decided to unite. He used the fireball again. The guy who was standing next to him used a gust of wind. And the girl used an ice needle. But this time they did not succeed. One of them said they couldn't do it. From this distance, they don't even hit the target. What should they do now? There is an examiner who approached Yuri and, calling out to him, asked why he was just standing. What happened? Why didn't he hurry up and use his magic? It's because he can't, isn't it? Such a level of swordsmanship that he is even able to defeat his brother. He's pretty sure he didn't have time to practice magic, didn't he? Humiliating his brother made him happy didn't it? Isn't he right? He laughed and said that, of course, as always. In this place, he is the law. If he can't use magic to destroy this thing, then they will all fail. What's the matter? Let him say something already. Yuri didn't say anything, after which he just used a fireball. There was a huge explosion, everyone was terrified. Someone said that he never thought that the day would come when he would see the legendary inferno here. Yuri thought that no, the magic he used was just a fireball. Also, he just accidentally shot it, so the power must have been relatively low. But this thing broke into pieces, Yuri looked at the examiner, who was very scared, and asked if that would be enough. The man fell to his knees and began to apologize to him for his mistake. He asked him to forgive this humble old man. Yuri said he just wants to know if he passed or not. The old man said that, of course, they all passed. After that, everyone began to rejoice very much. They shouted that yes, they did it. Now they are adventurers. Phil came up to Yuri and said that he was so strong. Yuri said that not at all, I am nothing compared to his previous life. Phil looked at him in surprise and asked, what is the previous life? She said he was such a strange person. Yuri thought that, leaving everything behind, the journey of becoming the strongest adventurer begins. The girl congratulated Yuri on passing the test. She handed him a card and said it was his adventurer's license. Yuri said that's what she looks like. Yuri thought that although he is only F rank now, but he will increase his rank by completing some quests. The girl told him that if he wanted to take the quest, then he should wait a minute for him to accept the quest. But they were interrupted by Phil, 
who hugged Yuri with a run. Phil cried part and thanked him for his help. Yuri thought that the future he was waiting for seemed so far away. After everything that happened, having guessed that no one would be able to pass this test, the judge revised and changed it. As a result of reducing the complexity of the test, more than half of the participants eventually passed it. She was very happy now and said that she barely managed to pass the test, but she is really very happy about it. Then the girl accidentally put her hand on his chest and felt that you were strange. She jumped up abruptly and asked if he was really a girl. Yuri said definitely not and told Lime he could get out. Thereafter, Lime came out of the front pocket of his shirt. Did he tell the girl his name was Lime? Something happened, and now they're friends. Phil screamed that he really knows how to tame monsters. Yuri said it wasn't like that at all and wondered if she knew she had a pretty loud voice. Then some man who was sitting on the couch nearby asked that he had tamed the slime. So what? One of his friends told him to relax, because they would be leaving soon. He doesn't need to be so angry. This man's name was Zack. Why we looked at this man and thought Zack, didn't we? The registry office said he wasn't angry at all. A system window appeared next to him, in which it was written that his name was Zack Barbell. Race is human, gender is male and age is 22. Yuri thought that the guy with the dog ears said that he was left trapped there. Phil asked him if he was okay. Yuri said that yes, he was fine, and he thought that maybe he was wrong. But he did not think that he needed to pay attention to him. That girl suggested to him that they could find a place where they could celebrate that they had become adventurers. Of course, there is not much money, but you can earn quickly in the guild. Yuri agreed with her and said that it was good. The next day, Fala burst into his room and said, Good morning. Yuri has not fully woken up yet and asked what is she? What happened? It's still very early, but the girl was very surprised by something. She asked, What kind of bed is this? Lime grew in size again, and Yuri slept right on it. Yuri said that this bed is too uncomfortable, which is why last night he asked if Lime could become a bed for him. Phil asked if she could touch him a little. Yuri thought that now her eyes were glowing and said that yes, of course. After that, she ran away and jumped up, jumped straight at Lime. She said it was so soft. Yuri asked that why did she come here. Phil told him that actually the guild in this city has such a thing as a cursory inspection. After that, she told him everything. Yuri thought that, according to Phil, at the moment their status in this guild is just a student. Accordingly, if they do not raise the level, then their licenses can be taken away at any time. Phil told him that, so at the moment they just have a temporary license. So Nas is going to take a quest and asked if he wants to go with her. Yuri said yes, of course, but first she had to let him do something. Phil only looked at him questioningly, and Yuri, opening the window, began to peer into the tree. When he found what he needed, he shot there with his magic, or rather a fire bullet. After that, men fell from this tree. Their faces were hidden behind masks. One of the men jumped up and said that it was simply impossible, because they were 100 meters away from him. The other man said that the mission had failed, so they needed to retreat. Yuri analyzed them and saw that one of them had a telescope in his hands. This item was of D rank a device with which you can observe distant objects. Yuri thought he realized they were watching him and Lime. Phil asked what happened. Yuri said it was nothing, there were a few insects outside. He looked out the window again and thought it was annoying. He can't imagine who in this life will try to spy on him. Phil told him to hurry up and, or she would leave him here. Did Yuri say that he was already coming? And he himself thought that he wondered who it could be. Did they really need his power? After that, they went to the forest to perform their quest. Phil walked in front and led Yuri. Did she tell him to come here? Then they noticed a rabbit on the brother-in-law. Seeing him, Lime somehow cringed, and this rabbit was scared. Yuri noticed this and asked Lime what happened. Lime answered him something. Then Phil turned to him and said that he was so lucky. Applications for collecting herbs are always popular, which is why they are accepted immediately. Herbal requests are one of the least dangerous missions without much threat to their lives. That's why people take them right away. She even had to wait in front of the guild building before it opened. Yuri asked if they were on the right track. The girl is surprised at him, looked at him and asked what is the right way. Yuri asked that if their mission was herbs, wouldn't it be better if they went to the eastern forest? Phil pouted, and Yuri looked at her questioningly. After that, the girl told him to listen to her. He should never enter the eastern forest, even if he gets lost. Yuri asked why, to which the girl replied to him, no matter what happens, he should not enter there. These monsters in the eastern forest are not the ones that F-rank adventurers like them can handle. Yuri thought that where he woke up was the deepest part of the eastern forest. Now that he remembered, the rank of Goblin Lord was in, so he was lucky to have survived that battle. Phil said that this forest is also called the Area of Dark Magic. There are a lot of powerful monsters in it. Yuri said that for sure, there was a basilisk. 
Phil said that's right, the scariest bird in the world is a basilisk, and asked what he had just said. Yuri said that he killed the basilisk. Phil laughed and said he was definitely a funny person. A very good joke. Despite how stupid it is, it is not so easy to fool. After a while, the girl said that here they came. This is a place in the northern forest where they can gather herbs. Herbs in this place are used for healing and antitoxin potions. Most of them are flax grass and lococo grass. But then she drew attention to this clearing and asked, is it really nothing? Yuri confirmed this and said that nothing. She began to prowl all over the clearing and said that nothing. At all. It's just not possible. Not alone at all, why? Then some man told her that unfortunately for her, it was Zack who said that they had accidentally gathered all the herbs here. Basically, the one who works faster is the winner, isn't it? Yuri immediately tensed up and thought that this was the guy. Zack said he knows the two of them just have a temporary license, right? Yuri said yes. Then Zack came up to the girl and handed her the herbs, saying that they had collected too many herbs. Let her let him share some of them with her. Phil was already very happy and asked what was really true and thanked him for it. But the man poured out these herbs right in front of her face and trampled them under his feet. He asked her if she really thought he would give her up and called her names. Why on earth would he share them with newcomers like the two of them? Just don't let her tell him that she thinks people in this world are kind. She's so innocent. In this world, the strongest survives, especially with an adventurer's career. They can do whatever they want, including taking other people's jobs. Then they turned around and called them idiots, said that if they understood, then let them leave. After this conversation, Phil was very upset. Yuri noticed this. The girl said that these people are so evil. Yuri said yes, now that she mentioned it, he thinks she's right. Phil started to get angry and asked if he was just thinking about it now. He's much calmer than she thought. Just because of these assholes, they will now have to return their licenses. Then they noticed that Lime was also getting angry. He jumped from Yuri's head to the ground, after which he increased in size again. Phil looked at him in surprise. And then the Lime split into a lot of small particles. Phil asked Yuri what he was doing. Yuri realized what Lime was up to and told the girl that he couldn't tell one herb from another, and asked if she could help him. The girl was very happy and said that it was good. After that, they went deep into the forest and began to collect herbs, and Lime helped them a lot. The girl explained what herbs to collect. So after that, they all started working very hard. After some time, they have already collected a lot of grass. The girl said that there was a whole ton right there. Yuri thought it looked like Lime had the ability to find herbs, and thanked him for it. Phil was also very happy and said that she tried so hard, but that's all she could find. Phil pointed to a huge mountain of grass and said it was theirs, and he asked that maybe they would put it together. Phil asked what could she really do, but she can't take it. Yuri was surprised and asked if she really didn't need it. The girl said that yes, she needed it, but she did not assemble it herself. She has to do it herself, because now she is an adventurer. Yuri agreed with her and said that she was right. Someone lime jumped on her head, and the girl asked what happened. And after that, small lime particles began to cling to her body. The girl was surprised and asked, what is it? Yuri told her to just watch. Lime cleaned all her clothes. The girl said it was just amazing. Everything is clean, and I thanked Lime for it. Then she said that this way she would be able to start searching again. But Yuri stopped her and said that not yet, because the coolest part has not yet begun. Then Lime got close to her and knocked the girl to the ground. He began to envelop her body. The girl did not understand what was happening. She asked what it was. Did you ask him to stop? But then she said it was so good. It's amazing. Lime started giving her a massage. The girl thought that it felt like fatigue and her body was disappearing. But then Slicing jumped up and told him to wait. She said how could she focus on her work with this thing. Yuri asked if she really couldn't. Phil couldn't stand it and told Yuri that when they returned, he should tell Lime to do it again for her. He must promise her and remember his words. Yuri said it was good. After that, they continued searching for grass in the forest. Yuri said they were supposed to be here, but they're not here. The girl said they couldn't find it at all. Then a system alert appeared in front of Yuri, in which it was said that he received magic without the attributes of the middle class. He thought that yes, or he got this skill when he woke up the other day. It seems that this new skill can be obtained if you just live normally in this world. Then Lime contacted him and started shouting something to him. Yuri was surprised and thought that was it really telepathy. And I asked Lime what happened. Lime was running very fast from something and kept shouting something to Yuri. Lime was being hunted by a wolf. And then Yuri himself saw what Lime saw. He thought that this was a teaching skill. If he gets high class skills, then he will be able to use telepathic communication to communicate with monsters. He analyzed this wolf and realized that it was a wolf of rank. Yuri thought that it wouldn't even be a fight if the Lime was divided. 
and he told Lime that okay, he had to go back. Phil looked up at him and looked at him questioningly. Eerie thought, does the separation of Lime make him so weak that wild animals chase him? There can be nothing good or bad about it. Then Phil called out to him and said that there. It was an E-rank wolf that came running. Phil got scared and said oh shit, they should run away. Eerie was not scared at all and just called out to the girl. He asked her that why shouldn't she try to destroy this monster. Phil stared at him in surprise and asked what. But then this wolf attacked her. The girl screamed and said she couldn't do it. He knows they're still in the F rank. Yuri asked, is that really the only reason? If she destroys this monster, then won't she get achievements? The girl thought for a moment, then said that she understood everything. She'll try. Yuri looked at this wolf and said that he was coming. Phil was already prepared and said yes. Well, after looking at this wolf, Phil got scared and said she was too scared. Yuri shouted at her not to take her eyes off her enemy. When she turns her gaze away from him, she will die. After that, the girl stopped and decided to gather her strength and also do as Yuri advised her. And this time she succeeded. She thought that yes, she could dodge it. If this is the only attack, then it can be evaded. Should she increase her weapon? No. When he dodges it's her one hit, then she can hit him another one. Yuri carefully watched their fight and thought that just as he thought. Of the six people in the guild, her skills are the best. Phil continued the battle with this wolf and thought, well, now it's time for the decisive blow. But introduces the moment, she stumbled. And almost fell. However, she gathered herself in time and stood on her feet. And then she struck this monster. She collapsed and said she did it. She looked at Yuri and told him that she had done it. But Yuri hurried to upset her and said no. Not yet. Phil asked him what. But looking back at the stage, I understood everything perfectly. They were surrounded by these wolves. They were completely surrounded. Phil was already very scared. Yuri thought it was very strange, even though these wolves are E-rank. Well, wolves are smart enough to hunt together. Then their rank should be higher. Even if they use one of them as bait in order to surround them, then isn't that too much? If so, there is only one reason. There must be a leader somewhere in this forest. After that, he contacted Lime and told him that he was leaving it to him. He has to look from a high tree in. But at the moment one of the wolves attacked him. But Yuri was faster and pierced this wolf with his sword. Phil asked if it was really an ice sword. Yuri used water magic and created an ice sword. He told Phil to step back a little. And he himself thought that if there were only a few of them, then he could only cope with the ice sword. But if this continues, then everything will become much more difficult. Well, okay, in that case, he decided to use amplification magic. He increased the durability of this ball and also strengthened the blade. And then he easily coped with a huge number of these wolves. Phil congratulated him and said it was just amazing. But Yuri said no. After that, more wolves began to arrive. He thought that the number of enemies was not even decreasing. Most likely there would be even more of them. As he thought, he would have to kill their boss. He contacted Lime again and asked him if he had found him. Apparently Lime found it. It was a D-rank silver wolf. With the help of his skill, Yuri saw this wolf and thought it was their leader. He applied acceleration and fireball again. And he did it so that this ball hit their boss directly. But the wolf felt it and dodged in time. Yuri was not surprised by this and thought that as he thought. Killing him in such an area would be too problematic. In that case, Phil was also trying to fight these wolves at that time and told Yuri that there were too many of them. Then Yuri used his next magic, and I told Lime to get out of the woods quickly. Phil was also scared and asked what he was, but she didn't have time to finish anything. Since Yuri had already used his advanced level fire magic, he created a firestorm, and then all the wolves, including their boss, were destroyed. Phil was in shock. She asked what it was. Yuri said he was just using fire magic, and he asked that it was normal, wasn't it? To which Phil replied that it was not normal at all. Now Yuri had two unique abilities, such as the memory of the Emperor of Magic and the memory of the Sword God. He also had such skills as fencing, advanced, fire magic, losing advanced, water magic, losing advanced, analysis, advanced, taming, advanced, strengthening magic, advanced in magic without an element, intermediate. When all their work was done, they returned to the guild again. They approached the girl and laid out herbs and crystals in front of her. Phil told the girl to look at it all. These were non-elemental magic stones tiny. That is, a tiny stone with non-elemental magic is stored inside. The girl said that these stones, they're from, and asked what's from wolves, right? She can't believe they destroyed these wolves during their first quest. Phil grinned contentedly and said that's what happens if she relies on her. The girl said that it was fine, then she would accept her as an adventurer of rank F and ask her to register with the guild. So is she congratulating her? Phil was very happy about it and started screaming that she had done it, and also thanked this girl. 
After that, the girl invited Yuri to her. She said she was next now and asked for his card. She asked what he had brought. Yuri said that today he brought. Then he opened his spatial storage, and he dumped out a huge pile of medicinal herbs. He said that he had found some medicinal herbs and magic stones, and so please let them evaluate them. The man who was sitting in the next window was very surprised and said, What is this quantity? Then two more men ran out, who asked what happened. They immediately began sorting through all these herbs and evaluating them. One of them said there was so much going on here. Another man asked the leader if the pharmacist would really buy so much. At this moment, their leader was studying some kind of stone. And when he realized what kind of stone it was, he was very surprised and said that it was a wind stone. It was indeed a medium-sized wind stone. His rank was S. This stone is medium-sized with wind magic that is hidden inside. One of these guys asked, what is an elemental stone? Another guy said that if he remembers correctly, then the condition of this stone falling out. They all stared at Yura, after which one of them asked if he had really defeated the silver wolf in the northern forest. Yuri calmly said yes. Oh himself, he thought it meant that this silver wolf was a famous monster, and then he asked if he could become an adventurer with it. Then their leader told him to wait a minute. After that, he began to give instructions to his subordinates. He said they should evaluate all these medicinal herbs, and others should go to the pharmacy, and he himself will go upstairs and talk to the bosses. And he himself thought that he was panicking too much is he okay? While they were all busy, Yuri and Phil decided to relax on the bench. Then he asked the girl if he could register as an adventurer. To which Phil replied that of course, maybe he's so strong. With his strength, it won't be strange if he gets an E or D rank. It's extremely rare to see a rank 2 promotion, but she's heard about it before. And most importantly, thanks to him, she was able to become an adventurer. So thank him very much for that. Then a man ran up to him and apologized for waiting. After that, he caught his breath and said that they would make an exception and raise his rank by 4. They would like to register him as an adventurer of rank B. Phil said that it was just amazing. She congratulates him. The guy asked the leader, is it really true? To which the leader replied that yes. After that, this leader turned to Yuri and said that after completing the morning searches and killing wolves and for defeating the silver wolf, making him a B rank is not a problem. And now, although it may be tedious, but he has to come here so that he can start re-registering him to rank B but Yuri said no and asked to wait a second. He's not really going to do something like that. Let them keep him as an F-rank adventurer. The man was surprised and asked what. Phil was also in shock. She started shouting at him that it was the same rank B he understands rank B. Yuri calmly said that he had already heard. Strong adventurers are forcibly given high ranks and high-ranked ones have to do what they don't want to do. The leader said that it was true, but high-ranking adventurers receive rank and honor. The rewards are also an order of magnitude higher. But Yuri interrupted him and said that he wanted to live freely without any restrictions on his freedom. Then he took his license and went to the exit. Phil ran after him and shouted for him to wait for her. The guy asked the leader if it was okay to let them leave. The leader said that he has been working in this guild for 20 years, but this is the first time that he has led an adventurer with such a desire. Phil asked him what, but is everything really okay? Yuri said that it was good, because from now on he would be an adventurer of F rank. After that, they walked around the city. It was already evening. Yuri was holding a bag of money in his hands and thought that he had managed to sell a magic stone and medicinal herbs well. He has safely registered as an adventurer, so he will rest today. Then he stopped. At some institution, after reading the sign, he thought that the adventurer's bar, so he decided to go there. Going inside, he thought that this place was quite pleasant. Then someone ran out to him and said that he was welcome. But this man abruptly stopped. It turned out that it was the same animal that Yuri met in the forest. The beast poked at him with his finger and asked that why was he here. Yuri was surprised at him, looked at him and asked who he was. Pancho said it was him, right. They met in the eastern forest. Doesn't he remember anything at all? Yuri asked him what, besides, why was he dressed like that? To which Pancho told him that he was already out of the game. He had to carry all the luggage like an adventurer without complaining. But when he saw how he killed the basilisk, he realized that that was enough. But don't let him misunderstand it. Now he has been hired by the bar manager and he plans to start a new life. After some time, he brought him his order and apologized for waiting. He said Pancho Panther's special dish is spaghetti Nero. Pancho told him that there was a wonderful sea in Ridiel where you could catch some special fish. It has a fresh taste from the sea and he used squid ink as the base of the dish. After trying this dish, Yuri said that it was very tasty. Pancho laughed happily and asked if he saw anything. That's the way it is, isn't it? Yuri asked that he had learned to cook somewhere. Pancho said that well, he had a long road to becoming a chef. He didn't fight very well, 
and that's why he did some experiments. Yuri said that he was self-taught. Pancho said something like that. Also, he heard that he was able to register as an adventurer. Yuri said that yes, quite recently and asked that how did he know. To which Pancho told him that this was a hot topic now, that he had broken the magic counter and almost killed the examiner. Yuri thought that this story was out of control. Pancho told him to be careful. If he gets too cocky, a man named Zack will notice him. Yuri thought it was that Zack again. And he asked what, and what exactly is with this guy Zack? Pancho said that they say that Zack has a goal to destroy the careers of all adventurers and kill them. Yuri asked why he needed it. Pancho said that their job is only to deal with monsters that multiply too fast. If the number of adventurers decreases, the amount of reward will increase. Recently, there have been adventurers who hunt for newcomers, so he heard. That's why he should. But Yuri did not let him finish and threw him against the wall. Did he do it for a reason? Someone jumped on top of them who really wanted to destroy them. Yuri, finishing his meal, thought that the bell had not even rung and he approached noiselessly. What's wrong with this guy? This man said he would kill him. Pancho said it's a chopping people, the Joker. Why is someone so famous here? Yuri thought it looked like he was quite famous. This man pointed his finger at him and said he would cut him into pieces. Then he attacked him again with his weapon. But Yuri easily dodged. This man laughed and said that to think that he could dodge. After that, he started attacking him again. Yuri dodged all his attacks again and again. This person said that beautiful movements. More, they need to have more fun. By this time, Yuri had finally finished his meal and thanked him for this meal because it was just delicious. And, perhaps, he will take more wine. After that, he swung this bottle at this person and used Grant magic called Diffusion Blow. But this man stopped him and said he could see him. Yuri was surprised by this and thought that to think that he had noticed his magic. He's different from the people he fought before. This man again decided to strike at Yuri with his axe. But Yuri, defending himself, broke his axe. This man was very upset, because he shouted that his axe. Yuri thought that when he touched the axe, it took some time for the effect to take effect. Since he was using magic enhancement, reduced durability, it was easy to break the axe. After that, he used water magic, an advanced one called ice fetters. Now this joker couldn't move because his feet were frozen. Now Yuri threw this bottle of wine at him and said that they would see each other again. The Joker was surprised and asked what. Yuri thought that strengthening magic was used in that wine bottle. And as soon as this bottle of wine touched this Joker, an explosion occurred. Yuri finally exhaled. Pancho also got out from under the counter and asked if it was really over. But when he saw what happened to his bar, he asked what. Yuri apologized and said that it seemed that he was a bit on the trash. At this time, rumors began to spread that the Joker had died. This news has just now been brought to Zack. Zack was just horrified and asked if the Joker had been killed. His friend said yes, even the Joker didn't stand a chance. The Order was very angry and said that they had so much money at stake and everything just evaporated. Out of anger, he kicked the barrel and said that, damn it, these guys are useless. Then a strange man appeared in front of him, who said that it looked like he had hit the nail on the head. Zack asked what the hell he was. Apparently, a new threat is laughing from the shadows. This man turned to Zack and said that it seemed that he was in a rather unpleasant situation. Seeing this strange man, both guys immediately pulled out their weapons and surrounded this man. Pointing his sword at this strange man, Zack asked who he was and where he came from. But then the man disappeared. Zack was very surprised and asked if he had really disappeared. Then this man reappeared behind his back and said that he should put away his weapon. He came to make a valuable exchange, and he asked what was good. He took out some kind of magic ball and told him to take a look at it. In this ball, Zack saw Yuri. This man said he knows he feels hatred for him, didn't he? Zack said yes, and then this man came right up to Zack and that you started whispering in his ear. But after listening to the end, Zack recoiled from this man, as if he had heard something very unpleasant or scary. Zack's friend asked what happened. This strange man said something else to him, after which Zack screamed very loudly that he would kill him. His friend was very scared for him and told him to come to his senses. After that, that strange man disappeared and thought that he would give this Yuri a test. The next day came, and Yuri went out again. He thought that this was the very place where, according to Pancho, there are good weapons. After that, he went into a gun store. He started looking around and thought it was a pretty good gun shop. Then he heard a girl swearing and shouting, which she had told him a thousand times. Yuri asked what happened there. The girl was very angry and asked what he was going to do with this sword that she bought here. Yuri immediately analyzed it and a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that her name was Rico Glonis. Race, human, age 16 and gender female. The seller of this store was a male dwarf and 53 years old. His name is Hugo Mantal. 
Hugo looked away and told the girl to shut up. She's too young, after all the work he's done, is Na still yelling at him? Riku continued to shout that it was with his behavior after he sold her a faulty sword. How dare he talk to her like that? She was sold a faulty product. She asks him to return her money. Hugo said his work was perfect. No matter how many times he does it, the result will be the same. Riko asked what he said. While they were arguing, Yuri managed to analyze the very weapon that was lying on the floor. He realized that it was a D-grade steel rapier. Status F. Currently broken and cannot be used. The material is also F. Made of low-quality materials. Quality A is done very well with the materials provided. Having learned all this information, Yuri thought that now he understands what is happening here. The shopkeeper's equipment is very good but the materials are not. All other weapons and shields have poor material, but the quality is a grade. He feels that he should go to another store before buying a new weapon, but solving the mystery of this store would bring him more merit. So he decided to turn to this shopkeeper. He approached the shopkeeper and said that, as he understood, there were no problems with the quality of weapons. Hugo told the girl that he had told her. Yuri said that, but the material he uses is not very good. The shopkeeper said he could see that he had very good eyes. Rico asked what he meant by saying that the materials were bad. Hugo said there was nothing he could do about it. It's almost impossible to make a great sword in this city, and no one in the neighborhood can make a good sword. Yuri looked at him questioningly, and the girl asked what was behind it. Hugo sighed with displeasure and said that this story began about two months ago. In this city, ore is extracted from the North Mountain to make weapons and shields. But the Golem clan made it their home. Of course, they sent requests to the guild, but he never received an answer. And that's why they go to a neighboring town and take ore there. And this sword he made for her is worth 20,000 gil. Of course, since he made it, he will give her a partial refund. Even if the material is so bad, it can't break so easily, because he made it himself. Rico was very unhappy with this and asked if he really wanted to say that she was bad with a rapier. Yuri summed it up and said that in other words, all he has to do is destroy these golems, right? The shopkeeper was very surprised and asked what really happened. Then he's counting on him a lot. Yuri said that of course. Then he went. The shopkeeper said he would be waiting for him. But then the girl stopped him and told him to wait a second. She is also an adventurer and her name is Rico. She sees that he wants to destroy these golems. And she asked if he could show her his license. Yuri said that of course everything is fine. When the girl saw his ID card, she was very surprised and asked what really F rank. He shouldn't do such a stupid thing. He doesn't want to die, does he? Yuri asked if he wasn't allowed to do that. Rico now started yelling at him, which of course, F-Ranks should only be engaged in farming tasks. They are also called Potato Rank. Yuri asked, what is Potato? Rico said that such in tourists get dirty farm quests, and that's why they are called Potato Rank. Yuri asked what it was, why was she so worried? Even if he dies, it has nothing to do with her, doesn't it? Rico was surprised and asked what? It would be bad for her if someone died because of her. She would follow him anyway. Yuri said that as she wants. They are coming to destroy these golems. After some time, they finally came to the right place. Rico walked ahead and said they were here. This is their goal for today, the northern mines. The girl looked at his weapon and said that besides, he bought this old sword without any hesitation. He bought himself a D-grade iron sword. A sword made of well-crafted iron. Material F. Not made of the best material. Yuri said that any weapon can be used, and he thinks that even such a sword can help in their case. Rico said she had never heard of anyone fighting heads with one sword. They went inside this spring, and the girl told him that, but she didn't think he was such a person. She came here because she had a dispute with the co-owner of the gun shop. Yuri told her that she wasn't like that. She followed him because she said she was worried. Rico blushed and said that she had said this even before they arrived here, but Yuri interrupted her as one of the golems appeared in front of them. Yuri was a little surprised and thought that he was much bigger than he thought, but Rico had already rushed into battle and told Yuri that she would show him how she fights. She wants him to watch her movements carefully. After that, she struck at this huge stone goal. One blow, of course, was not enough, so Rico did not stop there. She kept on and on hitting him in different places. Yuri just stood there and watched it in silence. He thought he understood. Golems have quite a lot of attack and defense power, but they have a low speed. And that's why she's biding her time and looking for an opportunity to attack the golems back with her hammer. After Riko defeated this golem, she returned to Yuri again and asked what was it like. That's how she fights. But the golem has not been completely defeated yet. The girl said that it was fine. She would sneak behind the golem and attack him. And he just had to stay here and defend himself. Did he understand? 
but what happened next, she did not expect Riku. This golem began to attack them with her stones. It was so fast that Riku didn't have time to react in time, but Yuri picked her up, who easily beat off all these stones with his sword. After that, the golem fell to the ground. Riku asked him what he had done, to which Yuri replied to her that all he did was repel his attack back, and he asked if something was really wrong. Riku said there was definitely something wrong here. What kind of reaction does he have? But then they again heard some kind of sound that came from the golem. The girl said he was still alive. Yuri came forward and asked her if she could leave it to him. Riku told him to wait, because if he was going to fight, he had to use this chance. To which Yuri replied to her so that she would not worry, because this sword would be enough for him. He thought that no matter what kind of stones he was made of, the most important thing was hardness. He doesn't need to fight by the rules right now. After all, there are so many ways to defeat a golem. Using the method that Riko Tiri used is not a bad idea, but it's a long time. And that's why, after which, he rushed straight at this monster. The girl was scared and shouted, what is he doing? Where is he running to? He has to dodge it. But Yuri wasn't going to stop. He used a special magic and strengthened his strike. He thought that even if the golems have great strength and protection, their speed is still not great. He's slow as a fly, so Yuri defeated this huge golem with one swing of his sword. From surprise, the girl even fell to the ground. She shouted, what was that just now? But in the end, they defeated this golem and moved on. Moving deeper into this cave, they met with many more of the same golems, but now they had no difficulty dealing with them. So then everything went very quickly even. Riko just stood aside and watched with surprise and a fraction of horror as Yuri dealt with these shins himself. After some time, when all the golems were destroyed, Yuri said that he must have killed all the golems. It looks like there is no one left, so the task is completed. Riko looked around and said yes. After that, Yuri began to collect iron ore. This iron ore was of E-grade, ore which is often used to make equipment. He also collected a non-elemental magic stone a small D-grade one, a stone that possesses her elemental power. Yuri thought that all these items could be useful in the manufacture of equipment, so you need to give the remaining magic stones to Lime. Riko had been watching him the whole time. When they had already moved on, she called out to him. Yuri stopped and looked at the girl questioningly. Riko looked very serious and asked him what? Who is he really? He killed the golem with one blow and used a sword she had never seen before. Yuri calmly told her that he was just usually an tourist of rank F. Riko, of course, did not believe him and told him not to make her laugh, because she was seriously asking him. But Yuri wasn't lying to her, he thought he wasn't joking or something like that. But then he drew attention to their further path. It was completely littered with rocks. Yuri asked that these stones used to be here. Riko said no, she didn't think so. Yuri said that this is the way out, isn't it? Why then? But then Zack interrupted him. He came here with his entire team. He said to think that he had defeated all the golems. Defeated the Joker and the golem. He's an annoying jerk. But Zack looked different now. Apparently, something happened to him after all. Yuri, of course, recognized him and thought that this guy was back. And he was about to say something. But Rico interrupted him and asked that they had some business with her friend. Or what? Zack yelled at her to get out of here. If she was going to get in their way, he would kill her. Rico couldn't stand it, so she grabbed her weapon and rushed forward. She shouted to him that they would look at it now. Yuri contacted Lime and told him to protect Rico. After that, a Lime appeared in front of the girl and increased in size, not letting the girl pass on. Riku bumped right into him and asked what it was. Lime restrained her movements and carried her further away from here. Riko started screaming, what is he doing? What is it? Yuri contacted Lime and told him to look for an alternative route and get out of here. The registry office asked what the hell is this. Left alone with this team, Yuri asked if he could ask them one question. Why does he get in the way of adventurers like him? Zack made a dissatisfied click and said that he was bothering him. He's just an eyesore. They all annoy him very much. They tried so hard to become adventurers themselves, but when they tried to join the guild, the adventurers of higher rank crushed them. They are used as bait to search for monsters. For them, they are just tools. Although every year there are new adventurers. In this world, the fittest and only the strongest survive. If that's the case, it doesn't matter what the powerful offer them. After all, when they cornered this adventurer, his expression was simply magnificent. And then he appeared. A guy they hadn't seen before. And he started destroying everything. He completed a task that no one could and received such a quantity of medicinal herbs. On top of that, he was recommended for rank B, wasn't he? So don't let him play with it. Does he hate guys like that? And that's why he has to die. After that, Yuri was surrounded from all sides and attacked at the same time. 
Yuri was completely calm and thought that even if he understood them, it still didn't make any sense. But doesn't that mean these guys are also weaklings? And after that, he easily dodged all the punches of these three guys. He used the wind blade, but then Zack got in his way and said that he was his opponent. Yuri used advanced fire magic. But then he stopped and thought that no, because it would be very dangerous to use fire magic in the cave. But then he was surrounded by those guys again. Yuri was surprised by this and thought it was strange, because he had to knock out these guys. He analyzed them and it was written in the system window that they had an abnormal berserk state. They had improved strength, immunity to pain, and low intelligence. Yuri thought, is it really an abnormal condition? Had Zack done something? Then Zack shouted to him that this was just the beginning. Yuri thought that no, because he was also in this abnormal state, then who? Then a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that a skill called wind magic, novice was obtained. A skill called wind magic, intermediate was also obtained. And a skill called wind magic, advanced was also obtained. At the moment when Yuri was distracted by this system window, those guys shackled him. Now he couldn't move. Zack had already prepared his sword to attack him, and told him that he was attacking. But Yuri was able to escape from the tenacious clutches of these guys and used advanced wind magic. Zack looked very surprised and scared, he asked what is it. Yuri used the storm. Zack asked what it was. He was a little scared now. He wanted to say something to him, but he was sucked into this storm. And when he dealt with them, Yuri stopped and looked ahead. He suspected something and asked if there was another one here, didn't he? This guy who did something to Zack and his team laughed, then appeared in this place. He said that in order to notice that he was here. He exceeded his expectations. It's very nice to meet him. His name is Nero Nichtmare. Nichtmare from Italian is a black nightmare. Nero said he would like him to remember that. Also, a system window appeared next to him, in which it was written that his race was human, gender was male, and age 28. And I thought that this man who appeared from the shadows was very different from the other guys. Nero said it was obvious they wouldn't do anything to him. He's just amazing. Yuri didn't answer him. He thought he understood. He thinks this guy was the one who made Zack and the others go crazy. If that's the case, should he attack him right now? Then Nero told him that he had only two options. He can join their clan or be killed right now. Yuri has already reached for his sword and thought that the clan. Nero, of course, noticed this and told him not to worry, because he has enough talent. He was watching him with his own eyes. Yuri was already very tense and thought that the more this man talks, the weirder he feels. He has a strange feeling, and then he remembered a fragment from his previous life. This surprised him very much, and he thought, what? Was he from his previous life? He remembered. And now he has told this guy that he is a substructural person. Yuri thought that when he was a swordsman, he remembers that he had a lot of trouble being in a clan with these guys. Nero tilted his head to the side and asked, what is a substructural person? He has no idea what he's talking about right now. Yuri asked what his number was, and he said that he remembers almost nothing. But when he sees him, these words pop up in his head. Nero said it was amazing that he remembered these numbers. However, he cannot tolerate this name, Mame. They risk their lives for the organization. He took off his glove and showed his hand, on which the number 928 was written, said that this was proof, evidence that they are unique. Yuri thought that he remembered. On the hand of each participant there is a number that does not disappear. Since he's been reincarnated here, he shouldn't be here. After that, he took off his glove and a number appeared on his hand. Nero, seeing this, was very surprised and asked what? No way. The number zero appeared on Yuri's hand. Nero said it was simply impossible. 500 years ago, this number should have disappeared. Yuri wasn't paying attention at all right now. At his words, he was completely focused on this number. He thought the number was zero. He knows that number one is the strongest, but what does that mean? Then Nero laughed and said that he understood what it meant. He realized that he wanted to stop them. Now he understands everything. Then he will kill him. After that, Nero began to move at such a fast speed around Yuri that it seemed that there were several Nero. He told Yuri that now they would see where to hit him. Yuri looked very focused and thought it was so fast. Those guys are nothing compared to him. But despite all this, Yuri still easily dodged all of Nero's attacks. Nero did not expect this in any way. And at some point, Yuri even disappeared from his field of vision. Nero asked if he had really disappeared. Yuri appeared on top of him and thought that no matter, he would have to use a little magic in order to stop him. So he used fire magic, beginner, fireball. But Nero was able to dodge his attack. Now he noticed Julius and clucked, said that he was upstairs. Yuri did not stop attacking him and used wind magic, the wind blade. After that, Yuri went down to the ground again and looked around. He thought it might be wrong. He calculated his strength. 
but since it looks like the berserk effect is wearing off, everything went well. Nero was wounded. He looked very surprised and asked Yuri how he did it, to think that he could do something like that. Yuri did not answer anything to him and used his next magic, but Nero caught himself in time. He saw that his feet began to freeze to the ground, so he decided to pull away. Yuri used a medium rank water magic, ice tomb, and yet Nero did not have time to escape from this magic. His legs froze, and he could no longer move. He said it was just unbelievable. He owns three different elements. After that, Yuri combined wind magic and water magic, and created an ice storm. Now Nero was very scared, shouted at him to wait a second. But it was too late and Nero was completely frozen. Now Yuri drew his sword and said that these last few days, thanks to all the troubles they caused, they made him and many other people feel pain. And then he appeared in front of him and got in his way. Nero asked what? Got up earlier. What is he talking about? Yuri waved his sword and said that all he wanted was to live his quiet life. Then he chopped up Nero. Yuri thought that freedom is the best thing, and he does not want anyone to stand in his way. Meanwhile, Lime led Rico out of this cave. Rico examined herself and said that somehow they managed to get out. She thought she was a little slippery, and she asked, What's interesting? Yuri, is everything okay? Just at that moment, Yuri happily came out of this cave. Rico looked very surprised and asked if he was really okay. Lime was there too, I'm very glad to see him. After all their adventures, they returned to that shopkeeper again. Yuri gave him the collected materials, and Hugo immediately got down to business. After some time, he came out to him and apologized for waiting. He showed him the sword he had made and said that like this, and he asked how he liked his job. Yuri immediately analyzed this sword. This sword was a destructive grade B a sword that is made of high quality metal ore. Status of the condition is new and close to unused. The material was also A. This sword is made of very expensive materials. The quality was also A. This sword was made using a sophisticated technique. Yuri said that he was very grateful to him and he would take it with pleasure. He asked that how much would he need to pay. Hugo laughed and said that if he took money from him, his forge would be disgraced. He doesn't need payment, so let him take it. Then he threw this sword into Yuri's hands. Yuri looked at this shopkeeper and thought that he had thrown an expensive sword that he had just made. He's pretty reckless. Wow was happy now. He laughed again and said that it had been a long time since he had worked like this. Yuri looked at this sword again and asked the shopkeeper if he was sure about it. This sword was made not only from the materials he brought, but also from what was already here. There are so many things here. But the corner interrupted him and told him to shut up, okay. If he says take it, then he should just take it, damn it. Yuri said that of course, then he would accept it. Hugo told him to do his best. Yuri said yes. After which, he walked out of this gun shop. Yuri thought that the wind outside was wonderful. Since he got a new sword, what could he also? But then he had a system alert in which it was said that a skill called swordsmanship, master had been obtained. Yuri was walking around the city right now and wondered if he got this skill because he was swinging the ball with all his might. Then two girls called out to him. It was Rico and Phil. Phil was very happy and told him to guess. Thanks to him, she can now defeat the wolves on her own. Rico said that because he helped her get out of the mountain, she was able to get some new weapons, and she can't wait to try them out. But then both girls looked at each other and simultaneously asked what who. Phil lowered her head and told Yuri that she was in shock. Yuri looked at her questioningly. Phil couldn't stand it and screamed that did he really like girls with huge cans. While pointing a finger at Rico, Rico blushed all over and shouted that she and Yuri did not have such a relationship. Phil said she thinks she's just very suspicious. To which Rico replied that she did too. She acts like Yuri is her father. Yuri, don't pay attention to the girls bickering. I thought there were times when he thought that everything was not going according to plan. But the life of an adventurer of rank F is not so bad. He wants to protect this peaceful and free daily life. A month has passed since Yuri was reborn in this world. Now he has friends, adventures and battles. Yuri was walking around the city again with Lime, who was sitting on his shoulder. Lime said something to Yuri, to which Yuri replied that yes, he thinks that they have been eating only fish lately, and invited him to go on an adventure. Lime was happy to support this idea of his. Gradually, Yuri began to get used to this city. One way or another, he succeeds as an F-rank adventurer in this world. Yuri again went to the building of the Adventurers Guild of this city. Tiffany greeted him there again. She was sorting out the papers now, but as soon as she saw Yuri, who came up to her, she immediately postponed her work. She said she had been waiting for him for so long. Yuri apologized and said that he was looking for a job today. 
Tiffany asked what kind of job he was looking for today. Yuri said that the quest is enslavement, and he would like to fight more monsters. Tycho didn't hand him a piece of paper and asked what about this. Yuri asked, what is the destruction of goblins? On this piece of paper it was written that this was a task to destroy goblins. The required rank is F. The goal is to defeat 10 goblins. The reward is 20,000 gil. And it was also written that this is a repeatable quest. Yuri thought that the place where he was staying right now costs 4,000 gil per night. So if he defeats two goblins, then he will have enough for one night. Then Tiffany asked him if he had ever done a goblin extermination mission before. Yuri looked at her questioningly. He pondered and thought that the first monsters he fought when he appeared in this world were goblins. Although this is his first time when he performed such a task. Tiffany said that if this is his first time, then she would like to recommend him to form a team and complete the task. Yuri asked what the command was. Tiffany said that yes, there are usually a lot of accidents when performing such tasks. For people who are doing these quests for the first time, it will be safer to create a party and support each other. Yuri thought he understood. After that, he went to the board where there were a lot of different ads. He thought there were so many of them. Then he noticed a leaf that caught his attention, and he thought it looked like this group was for him. It said there was a quest to conquer goblins. Search for participants, one person. The battle requirements are someone who can fight with nothing. The meeting place was also indicated there. The meeting place was in front of a water fountain. So without wasting any time, Yuri went straight there, coming to the right place. He began to look around and thought that he thought they should be here somewhere. Tun heard a girl, addressing a man named Reef, say that they need to hurry up and already go. A man and two girls who were sitting on either side of him were sitting by the water fountain. One of the girls was named Emily Muse. Race, human, gender, female and age 17. The man's name was Rit Olimer. Race, human, gender, male and age 18. On the other side sat a girl whose name is Muselle Barton. Race, feline, gender, female and age 16. Emily said it's normal to go with three people. He knows himself. Reith said could they wait a little longer. Muselle asked that he also knows that if they don't hurry up, the requests will be accepted by another team. Emily told the man that he was always so worried. Reith asked that she never had to worry about him, did she? Muzel said the goblin was nothing against the three of them. Then Yuri came up to them and said that he had come on request. Reith immediately noticed his sword. He got up and thanked him for coming. He began to look at him and said that he could see that he was a swordsman. It will fit perfectly. He just has a great sword. And he also introduced himself and said that he was the leader of the team. Emily also got up and said she was a sorceress. Muzel said it was nice to meet her. Reith said that since they had introduced themselves, they needed to move on to the rules. First, you need to fairly divide the reward into four parts. In case they get a rare item, they will go to a pawn shop and sell everything. Everything is fair. Yuri said that yes, it sounds good. After which Reith said that and finally, he asked if he could show him an adventurer's license. There were cases when the person who joined was just a robber. Yuri said that of course, and handed him his license. But Rita's mood immediately changed when he saw that Yuri was a rank F. They immediately turned around and walked away from him in the other direction. Emily said that's why she said it was better to go right away. Reith said that in the end, it was a waste of time. Yuri just looked at them questioningly. Then Reith turned to him and told him to disappear, because they don't need F-rank garbage. Then Emily told him that if he held something like that in his hands, he would get dirty. Reith looked at Yuri's license and said that yes, she was right. Then he threw the license and told Yuri that he had forgotten something. Yuri's license fell right into the water. Reith apologized and said his hand just slipped. After that, he hugged the girls and said that well, they would leave him, let him wash, because it would be useful for him. Then just the same Rico came, apparently, in order to also pass this quest. She said this is it. And then she saw Yuri, who was in the fountain and was trying to get his license. She asked what he was doing there. After that, the two of them went to the northern forest. Yuri told her everything. Rico said what a shame. Yuri said that if it wasn't for her, he would have gone on this journey alone, so thank her very much. Rico said that what was he talking about? Because it was thanks to him that she did not need to go on a mission with such a team. Yuri asked what, is it considered rude if an adventurer of F rank tries to join the team? Rico said no, nothing like that. It's just that these people were very rude. This is simply because the required rank for the task of destroying her goblins is F. This means that any adventurer can complete the task. Well, she will tell him something about the quests. He has to listen very carefully. There are two types of quests, special quests that require a certain rank and normal quests that any rank can complete. This time they have a regular quest. 
but during normal quests, it is not so rare to meet a strong enemy. According to the guild, it looks like goblins live in these places. They said that since the head of the Silver Wolf Forest was defeated, the goblins are now attacking everyone. So he has to be careful. Yuri said he understood. Then they heard some rustling. Both immediately reached for their swords. Riku asked, what is it really already? But then two people came out of the thick grass. An elderly man asked what was going on. The guy who was with him said there were no goblins anywhere. An elderly man, seeing two people, asked if they were also looking for goblins. Yuri said yes, to which the elderly man said that there were no goblins here. The guy said it looked like the other adventurers were ahead of them. The older man said they'd better go somewhere else. Yuri said that he understood and thanked them. He asked Rico if she knew of another place. Rico reached for the card and said yes, let him wait a second. Unfolding the map, she said that they would look now, there is one here, but it is two hours away. Yuri turned to Lime and asked if he had heard. Lime understood what Yuri was driving it, so he turned into a basilisk. Yuri immediately climbed on it and asked Rico what happened. Why shouldn't she sit behind him? Rico screamed that it was a basilisk. But then Lime grabbed her by the cloak and threw her on his back. Rico was shocked and asked what. Yuri calmly told her that it was fine, let her hold on tight. Then they took off. Rico asked what was going on. Rico was terrified. She asked Yuri if they could fly a little slower. And also, don't let him look at her. Yuri thought that they were already flying quite slowly. They can't fly any slower. He asked Lime if he could hold Rico. Then Lema took her hands. So now the girl couldn't hold her skirt, and it was going up. At that moment, Yuri turned around to make sure that she was alright. The girl screamed that no. After some time, they finally reached the western plane. Lime turned back into his usual self. Yuri thanked him. Rico hasn't fully recovered yet. She said he was just amazing. At this speed, he. But then she abruptly stopped, as she felt sick. Yuri asked if she was okay, and offered to take a break. He thought it looked like these people weren't very good at handling fast things like this. For him, it was like a fun roller coaster ride. After that, they came to a pond that was nearby. Rico had already recovered a little, looking around, she said that what a wonderful view. She had heard about it in the rumors, but this place is even more wonderful. But then Yuri noticed something. He thought 10. There aren't any more of them, are there. Amazingly, they don't have much strength, but they don't use their small bodies to hide. Rico told him to take a look at it, because he would never see it again. But Yuri told her that he advises to draw a sword. And at that moment an arrow flew out of the bushes. It was aimed directly at Rico. But Yuri easily caught it with one hand. He thought he saw them, they were hiding in the shadows. This is the perfect place to attack adventurers. Then one of the goblins appeared from the bushes. Several more were in the trees and were already ready to shoot arrows at them. Rico told Yuri that it was. But Yuri interrupted her, because he understood what she wanted to say, and said yes. This place has already become a home for goblins. And at that time, arrows were fired at them from all sides. Yuri had already taken out his sword and began to fight off these arrows with great speed. So none of them hurt them. Rico was horrified and at the same time very surprised. She thought that she would never stop being surprised by his speed. Yuri asked if he could ask her to go ahead. He will support her with magic from behind. Rico had already rushed forward and said that of course. V at that moment Yuri activated his magic. He applied acceleration. Now Rico was also moving with great speed. She was shocked and asked, what is it? Her body is so light. She will succeed. And after that, the goblins were almost all destroyed. She thought it was just amazing. Then a small group of goblins formed in front of her, and she said that these were the last ones. But then there was another goblin in the tree behind her, who was already ready to shoot an arrow at her. But Yuri noticed all this and used water magic of an advanced class, an ice needle. Thus, he destroyed this goblin. Meanwhile, Rico had already dealt with the others. She put away her sword and ran up to Yuri. She asked, what did he do with her body? Yuri calmly told her that all he did was just use his magic to strengthen her. This is normal, isn't it? Rico couldn't stand it and screamed that it wasn't normal. And she herself thought that his sword technique was also good. Since they had already completed the task of exterminating goblins, they went to meet new adventures. After that, they began to move on. Rico is already pretty exhausted. Yuri walked ahead and stopped, asked if she was okay. Rico told him not to worry, because she's fine. He shouldn't worry about her. Yuri thought that even if she said that, there was clearly something wrong with her. Then the girl staggered and, apologizing, said that she needed to rest a little. Yuri analyzed her and realized that her current condition is a weak poison. He wondered when it had happened. He leaned over to her and asked her if the goblin had touched her, didn't he? Rico said yes. She showed her leg, which had a small scratch and said it was just a scratch on her left ankle. 
but it was just an arrow that grazed her. Yuri asked if she could show him her wound for a second. Riko said she didn't mind. Yuri, looking at her wound, thought that her wound had a strange color. He realized it looked like the goblin's arrows had been poisoned. After which he said that he assumed that there was some kind of poison in that arrow. Riko got scared and asked what the poison was. It's just unbelievable to think that goblins use poison. And she asked if it was really that rare. To which Yuri replied that yes. And he thought that yes, goblins used weapons that required a lot of intelligence from them. Perhaps these goblins have higher IQs than the rest. Riko said that nevertheless, she is very surprised. She does not have any medicines for the poison. It would be very nice if they met an adventurer on the way. But, she is very sorry. All she does is drag him down. She's really sorry. Yuri said he doesn't think this is a problem. The girl looked at him in surprise. Yuri asked Lime what he thought. Would he be able to suck out this poison? Lime has already got down to business. And, apparently, everything went very well. The poison was completely eliminated from her wound. After that, Yuri asked how she was feeling. Riko said she feels much better already. It helps, and she thanked Lime for that. Then a system window appeared in front of Yuri again, in which it was written that the skill he received holy magic as a beginner also got intermediate level and advanced level. Yuri thought it had been a long time since he got a new skill. Riko said she would bother him. Then Yuri came up to her and asked if she could show him again where she got hurt. Riko said she didn't mind, but Yuri immediately applied beginner level holy magic healing and her wound healed right before her eyes. The girl was very surprised and asked what is healing magic. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Yes, it seems that everything has already passed. And I asked him what, but where did he get this rare skill from? Yuri asked if healing magic was rare. Riko said that of course. White magic is the rarest of all skills. Yuri apologized and said that he had only just realized this. Riko asked what just now. After that, they attacked a group of goblins again which they defeated with ease. After killing all the goblins, Riko said that it looks like they took care of most of the goblins. Yuri agreed with her and said yes. He told Lime that he was putting it on him again. After that, Lime stretched out and enveloped all the bodies of the dead goblins. The goblins' bodies began to decompose right before our eyes. After that, stones without attributes began to fall out. They were small E-grade stones. Yuri thanked Lime for taking care of everything. Then Riko discovered something. She picked up some kind of weapon from the ground and said it was strange. Yuri asked if something was really wrong. Riko said she wanted him to take a look at it. Doesn't he understand anything? It was a stone axe of the rank of E. Yuri took this axe in his hands and said that he would look at it now. He thinks it's a pretty good weapon for a goblin. Riko said that yes, that's exactly it. This weapon is too complicated for goblins to make. It happens that goblins fight with weapons. But these are mostly stones and sticks. However, these goblins have bows and arrows, axes, and even cooked poison. It's really very strange. In other words, there may be a goblin boss in these places who runs it all. Yuri thought that the boss understood. He asked Riko that the boss is something like a goblin lord or something, isn't it? Riko said that it is said that goblin bees overlords are the most powerful type of goblins. Yuri thought that it meant that the goblin chief he had recently killed was an unusual monster. Riko said that, however, she was surprised. She didn't think he knew about the goblin lord. She didn't think he knew so much about monsters. Yuri still calmly said that no, it was just that the goblin lord was the first monster he defeated. Riko, of course, did not believe him and said that there was no way he could defeat the Goblin Lord alone. But after analyzing everything and remembering how he fought, she asked that did he really defeat the Goblin Lord. Yuri said yes. Riko turned her back on him, said no, is it possible that he? Yuri said that so, the boss is nearby. And how can they detect it? Riko said that's the whole problem. These goblins are pretty smart and she doesn't think they'll let them track them down so easily. Yuri said that he understood they would track them down. But then he heard something. He discovered goblins and thought he had found them. He turned to Lime on their connection and asked if he could do it. Lime immediately rushed to this goblin. Riko asked what he had done. Yuri said that in order to follow them, he asked him to look at a small part of them. So now they can start. After receiving the task of exterminating goblins, he and Riko went to the western forest. Goblins in this area are good at group combat. Upon learning of their boss's existence, they attached a tiny Lime to the globin and followed them. Right now, they were tracking these goblins. Now Riko was already walking ahead, and then stopping abruptly, she told Lime to be quiet. They entered the cave, after which they followed them. Yuri thought that the entrance is small, but it is spacious enough inside. 
which makes it a good place to hide from enemies. Rico has already looked around and said that there is no doubt that the goblin boss is here. Then someone called out to them and asked what he was doing here. It was Wreath and his team. He told them just to see who is here. After all, a potato digger of F rank. What is he doing here? There's no potato field here. Emily asked why he was even here. Maybe he got lost in the field. Then they laughed. Rico asked Yuri that this was the guy he was talking to, wasn't it? Yuri said yes. Wreath asked them that since they were both here, shouldn't they tell him that they were also going to enter the nest? Yuri said yes. The man was in shock. He told him that he would stop saying nasty things, but it was too reckless for him to go to the nest. Then Emily, having carefully looked at Yuri, came close to him and asked what Yuri was, didn't she? If he really wants to come in, then why doesn't he take her luggage with him? They have been traveling for a very long time, and her shoulder and back are very sore, and that's why she asks him to carry her luggage. Rico was horrified and thought, why is this woman standing so close to Yuri? Emily said that if he carried it, then later, maybe she would do him something nice. Yuri didn't get the hint and thought it was good, and he said he didn't care, but he wasn't sure. Emily asked what was really true and thanked him, but then it became Rico between them and screamed that no. She turned to this girl and told her to stay away from Yuri. After that, she turned to Yuri himself and asked what he was thinking about. No way, even if he doesn't tell her that he likes it. Yuri said no, but he doesn't know what's going on inside the nest, and she's been hurt before. Reef said they would go inside anyway, so don't let them hold them up. Emily grabbed his hand, and the man asked that why did she take him with her? Does her shoulder really hurt? Emily said they really hurt a lot. She looked at Yuri and said that they could use him as a shield if anything happened. That's what she's thinking. After that, this whole team went inside this nest. Then Emily asked why the goblins still hadn't appeared. Muzel said she was already tired of walking. Reef stopped and said that okay, then they would make a halt. They took out their food and started eating. The girl was told that it looks very appetizing. Emily said she cooked it all for her Rita. Muzel also handed him her food and said she only did it to make him happy. Reef said he was very happy and thanked them both. After that, both girls began to feed him. Reef laughed and asked if they had both come for a picnic. Rico and Yuri were sitting apart from them. The girl blushed all over and said that they were shameless. She can't stand it. And yet she looked at her food and called out to Yuri. She handed him her sandwich. Yuri asked if she was really giving it to him. The girl blushed and nodded to him. Then Yuri took a bite. Rico looked up at him and asked, So what? How is he? Delicious. But then one of them jumped up and said that something was coming here. Some kind of smoke got in here. Reith and his team immediately jumped up, and he asked what kind of smoke was that. Emily said he smelled really bad. Yuri told Rico to stick with him. After that, he used advanced wind magic, wind strike. But what happened surprised him a lot. He wondered if the wind hadn't blown him away. Emily shouted at him that he was really useless. He doesn't do anything. Yuri did not pay any attention to her words and decided to apply the analysis. A system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that it was a dark fog of class E. This magical mist is generated by curse magic. Yuri thought that is the magic of the curse. Rico came up to him and asked what it was. Yuri said it was a magical attack from the enemy. Emily stuck to Rita again and asked what should they do. Wreath told her to calm down first, because goblins can't use magic. It's probably just the boss. Yes, she stands behind him. Tons will work hard. The girl said it was good. Wreath patted the girls on the head and said that he would take care to protect them both. And at that moment the goblins appeared. They were the elite goblins of rank D. They looked very different. They were much taller and looked much stronger. Wreath asked, what kind of goblins are they? Yuri thought that the goblin elite he had fought before wasn't that big. He also found out that they are now in a state of violence. They have low stamina and they don't feel pain and they also have low intelligence. Emily turned to the man again and asked that he would be able to take care of it, to which the man replied that it was just a goblin, although in fact he was very scared and thought that hell, he had never heard of such a thing, unless goblins are rather big. He came close to him and held his sword in his shaking hands, then he swung and was about to hit the goblin, but the goblin only stopped his sword with one hand. Wreath did not expect this in any way and asked if he had stopped his sword, then the goblin drew his sword and threw it aside and then he punched Rita in the stomach with all his might. Wreath was very scared and screamed in fear, rushed to the leak. He asked the girls what the two of them thought they should protect him. Then he left the girls, and he ran away. Emily shouted at him to stop. But the goblins have already captured these girls. They started shouting for them to let them go and get their hands off them. Wreath ran up to Yuri and Rico. The girls kept screaming and asking them for help. Wreath said it wasn't his fault, he didn't do it. Yuri turned to Rico. 
but Rico understood everything without words and told him not to worry about her and just go. She is also a swordsman, so she will defend herself. Then Yuri told her that by the way, her sandwich was very tasty, and asked if she could do them again as soon as they finished the task. The girl said it was good. After that, Yuri applied acceleration and moved straight at these goblins. The girls were all trying to escape from the clutches of goblins. Emily screamed for him to let go. She told him to let her go. Where is he dragging her? After they came to the right place for the goblins, then this goblin threw her to the ground. Emily immediately thought about her friend and looked at what was happening to her. At this time, her friend goblin was already pinned to the ground. And now the goblin has already torn Emily's clothes and already wanted to start pestering her. The girl was so scared that she started screaming that no, don't. But then Yuri arrived in time, who cut off the head of this tapestry. And then I figured out another one. He asked Muzel if she was okay. But the girl was so scared that she didn't answer him. But then more goblins arrived. Yuri thought that even though they were goblins, it would be difficult for him to use one sword. So he used an intermediate wind magic, a wind shield. After he stopped using it, one of the goblins decided to attack him from behind. Yuri was already reaching for his sword, but then Rico came to his aid, who killed this goblin. Yuri told her that she had saved him. Rico looked at him and said she thought he was a goblin. Yuri said he was surprised that she could see well to fight in the dark. To which Rico told him no, because she just saw something moving and thought it was an enemy and attacked him. She thought that if it was Yuri, then he would just dodge the sword. A goblin shaman of rank B appeared here. He was able to speak in such a way that he said that they were insignificant people. They dared to come to their house. Over and over again, Rico was horrified and thought, is it really a goblin that speaks a human language? This goblin is very bad news. She doesn't think she can convince him with such a huge magic power. She's very scared. Her body doesn't even move. Yuri looked at the girl and understood everything. He touched her shoulder and said that everything was fine. And comma she shouldn't worry. The VK goblin boss he had fought before was much stronger. This goblin leads the other goblins, and his intelligence is quite high. So she should calm down, because he is stronger than any other goblin. But even she is stronger than him. Hearing this, the girl finally came to her senses and gathered herself. He asked her if she could help him, to which Rico said she was ready. The goblin shaman ordered his army to capture them. After that, the goblins pounced on them. But Yuri and Rico were already ready to fight, so they easily dealt with these goblins. Yuri thought it was strange, because they hardly resist. The goblins they had fought before on the western plateau were stronger. He looked at the goblin shaman and thought why did he? And at that moment, this goblin shaman laughed and said that they had made a mistake. When they killed them, then Yuri noticed that something was coming out of the goblins' dead bodies. The bath creatures moved right at him, and then Yuri decided to use a fireball. But it didn't help him, Then they attacked him. He thought his body was on fire, and applied the analysis. He looked at his hands and a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that the exhaustion skill was rank D. This skill drains the target's power. Yuri thought that maybe the curse fog was connected with this magic. Goblin Shaman shouted that there was no fight. He will show him the full horror of his power. Yuri understood that it was bad, because he was losing consciousness. But then he got a skill that called itself Acquired Curse Magic, Beginner, Intermediate, and Advanced Level. Rico asked him if he was okay, to which Yuri replied that yes, everything is fine now. The Goblin Shaman asked what he was saying, and then Yuri used a reflection spell. He thought that since he liked the magic of curses, the Shaman was very surprised and asked what he had done. He wondered if he had deflected the spell back. After that, the shaman was destroyed. Yuri, looking at him, said that he would know the full horror of the magic of curses. After that, he went to the port of Lydia. There he decided to fish and take a break from all his recent adventures. He looked very pleased and happy now. After he and Rico completed the goblin extermination mission yesterday, they shared the reward. Wreath ran at full speed to the exit of the cave, and the girls were in shock because they were betrayed by Wreath. Right now he is engaged in a fishing quest. And apparently, he really likes it. He asked if he could pull it out. Pulling on the fishing rod, he caught a rainbow D-rank fish. He thought that as he thought it was like a game. Then someone came up to him and, calling out to him, greeted him. He told him that he seemed determined today. Coming closer to him, he said that it was a rainbow fish. He was very lucky. It was Baptiste Rodias. Gender, male, type of feline, age 55 years. Baptiste told Yuri that rainbow fish move quite fast, and that's why it's quite difficult to catch them with a net. It does not seem to him that it will cost quite inexpensive. Yuri said that it might be so, and, apparently, they are quite rare to catch. After that, they began to talk a lot and became friends. Yuri thought that this man named Baptiste was a very good man 
and he had been teaching him how to fish for the last few days. Apparently, he was an adventurer some time ago, but since he was shot in the knee, he just stays in the harbor and communicates with fishing adventurers. Then Baptiste told him that alright, he would be fishing there, so if he needed anything or anything happened, he should call him. Yuri thanked him and said that it was good. After that, he was left alone. He thought that he sometimes thinks about the past. In his previous life, he lived in a country called Japan and went to work every day. It seemed like he had a pretty hard life. He thinks that most of all in his past life he wanted some kind of freedom. And at that moment something pecked. He couldn't get this fish to the surface in any way. It was pulling very hard. He thought that the curse with such force. So he activated the enhancement magic and applied the strength enhancement. Baptiste noticed that something was wrong and asked if something had really happened. Yuri said it looks like he underestimated this fish. Baptiste came up to him and said that well, it looked like he had arranged a straw fishing trip. Yuri asked what it was. Baptiste said that this happens if he has some time. That is, on the fishing line. A larger fish devours a smaller fish that is already on its line. At first glance, it looks pretty big. If he holds onto the fishing rod for too long, it will break so that he must pull it out immediately. Yuri said that he understood, and then pulled with all his might. Just a huge fish appeared on the surface. Everyone was terrified. To be more precise, it was a huge sea rank shark. Everyone got scared and ran away. Yuri thought, why on earth are there monsters here? After that, he easily killed this shark. After that, he began to wipe his sword, which had blood from this shark on it. When he wiped his sword, he said that well, now there is no blood left. Then a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that he had acquired the skill of fishing, a beginner. He thought that he didn't even know that there was a fishing skill. Then two girls came to him. It was Emily and Musily. They sat down next to him. Emily said their hearts have changed because they know it's bad to choose someone just because of their looks. Musily said they realize that someone as strong as he is is their type. Yuri said he understood. Emily asked that he was in the middle of a quest right now, wasn't he? Yuri said yes. Emily asked if there was anything they could do to help him. Musily said they would do anything for him. Yuri asked that then they could not put some bait on his fishing rod. The girls simultaneously said yes. Emily took out a small box and said that the bait. Her friend came up to her and said it wasn't fair. There was some strange porridge in the box, from which worms began to appear. It became disgusting and unpleasant for them to look at it, so they dropped this box and ran away. They shouted that they couldn't, they can't, so they go home, and they apologized to Yuri. Yuri said that they scattered everything, and he just thought that finally, he has someone to complete this task with. And he asked, I wonder what happened, and I thought it was good that the girls didn't feel unhappy. After he completed his quest, he decided to go home and sleep. But then someone came to him and started waking him up. It was Phil who asked if he was really awake. Couldn't he have woken up? Waking up, Yuri said that it was just her. And he asked what happened so early. Phil told him not to ask what happened. Hadn't he heard anything about today's training? His face. Did he really not know anything? After he finally woke up, Phil started telling him everything. She said that all novice adventurers like them receive special training once a month, and also brought a book called Recommendations for Adventurers. Yuri asked what would happen if they didn't pass this training. Phil apparently didn't know the answer to this question, so she opened the book and told him to wait a second. She thinks it was here somewhere. Yuri thought, is she really going to carry this book all the time? Then Phil said what she had found. It seems that any adventurer who continues to skip this training will be stripped of their license. Yuri said he understood and thought it was very bad. Phil said that now that everything is settled, they need to go. Yuri said yes. But then he saw something and said that before they left, could she give him a minute? He looked out of the window and began to look around carefully. He thought that when they were being spied on last time there was only evil intent, but this time he feels something else. He feels a thirst for murder. Then he used a sniper fireball and he shot at the same tree. Phil ran to the window and asked what he had done. Yuri said it was nothing special, it was just that there was a beetle on the tree. And he thought, who the hell was it? Meanwhile, some men were watching him nearby. The man said that, of course, number 928, he was able to dodge. He turned to some monster and asked that he would be able to hunt him, right. He turned to number 230. The same number 230 told him to leave the jokes aside. Does he really think that he will lose to a common man? He doesn't even need to meet him. The pets he raised himself will be able to take care of him. Meanwhile, Yuri has already come to the back garden of the guild. Everyone has been gathered for a long time. Phil told him to go faster. Yuri said yes and apologized. Then some girl called out to him very rudely and told him to get out of the way. The guys looked at this girl and one of them said that no way. The other guy said that it was Aisha Thorne. 
Yuri asked Phil if she was really famous. Phil said that didn't he know her. This is Aisha Thorne. She is one of the 10 rank adventurers in this city who have risen on their own. 10th place among adventurers in the rank, Aisha Turnavea. Should he remember her? Aisha reached for her sword and asked everyone if they were listening to her. She will teach them. She came here today just to teach them. Teach them how to train properly. In other words, she will simply remake them in order to turn them into something better. Then some man couldn't stand it and shouted that did she really think he could stand and listen to this? Who does she even think she is? She's still a child, isn't she? She's the worst adventurer in the world. He grabbed her roughly by the shoulder and told her not to look like that. For adults, she. But Aisha didn't let him finish and threw him out with one of her hands. She said that she hates being talked to like that, and that's why she's going to train them in close combat today. Do they have to show their strength? She told them to come to her. After that, a lot of people got angry and immediately rushed at her. But the girl easily dealt with all of them. The only ones who didn't go to her to fight were Yuri and Phil. Aisha looked at them and called out to them. Phil hid behind Yuri out of fear. She greeted her and said they hadn't told her anything. Aisha smiled at them and said they looked good. She is proud that they did not attack her after seeing her strength. Yuri thought that in fact the reason was not that, he just didn't want to fight. Aisha said it was good, she liked them. She will teach them how to handle a sword. Yuri said that there is no attack, in fact they are not interested in it. Aisha said she believes they are afraid of her, but don't let them worry. She accepted the two of them. Now let them follow her. Now they have to start training. After that, the three of them went to the northern forest. Phil asked Aisha if it was okay that she was here. Aisha asked what she meant. Phil said she just thought she wasn't doing that much for training. Aisha said that everything was fine. Most novice adventurers who participate in training grow up like scum. That's why her mission is to break their pride, which misunderstands everything. In fact, newcomers who don't see their weaknesses are more likely to die. And she has to tell these people about their weaknesses. And then she said that they had come. They need to come here. They came out into a clearing where huge trees grew. She handed them the swords and told them to take it. Yuri immediately analyzed them and realized that it was an iron sword of rank F. This is an ordinary sword that everyone can use. Phil asked what they would do. Aisha said that, first, they should take a look. This is the sword she gave her. And she will show her an example. After that, she went to the tree and concentrated. Striking at him, she cut him down. Phil said it was just amazing, so that's what an adventurer in rank means. Aisha turned to her and said it was her turn now. Phil got scared and shouted that no, she couldn't do it. Aisha said that it would be difficult at first, but if they kept doing it constantly, by the time they cut down this tree, they should be able to learn intermediate level fencing skill. After that, Phil came up to the tree and said that now she understood everything, so she would try. She took out her sword and started waving it in different directions, but she couldn't do it. There were just cuts on the tree. She was already noticeably exhausted and could no longer. Aisha turned to Yuri and said that it was his turn now. Yuri said yes, and he himself thought that this was a great opportunity to test this skill. But if he hits with all his might, then he will break. He does not want to break a weapon that was borrowed from someone. So he decided to be careful. And with one swing, he tore down a tree and also damaged the ground. He exhaled and thought that well, this time without destroying the weapon, he was able to adjust the power. But seeing this, Aisha was horrified. Yuri came up to her and said that he had done what she told him, and asked if something was really wrong. Aisha pulled herself together and said that he had passed. That's enough. Yuri put the sword away and said that great, it's better than nothing. Phil was horrified and shouted that it was clearly abnormal. Yuri asked what really, but all he did was what she showed them, right. The next test of the examiner of the rank of V. Aisha said that the next stage is the training of magic. She pointed her finger at Yuri and said that, by the way, what did he say his name was? Yuri told her his name. Aisha asked if he had been taught magic before. Yuri said no, he didn't think so. Then Aisha grinned contentedly. She said that yes, that's right, when it comes to applying the laws of magic, then he is a beginner. Yuri thought, is there really something good in this? Why is she acting like this? Aisha said that this mountain place is ideal for practicing magic. Nothing will burn around, even if he uses powerful magic. If they want to learn how to wield a sword, they should go to the forest, and if they want to learn magic, they should go to the mountains. In other words, this place is perfect for learning magic. Phil said she understood, and she will write it down. Aisha said it was fine, she would show them the power of magic, so they have to stay there. She took out her sword and said that, first, they should start casting a spell. She decided to use the fire spear, and she said that both the fiery spear crawled on the ground and danced in the sky. May it pierce through the heavens. And she used advanced fire magic, a fiery spear. Her magic really impressed both Phil and Yuri. 
After that, Aisha turned to them and said that something like that. Phil ran up to her and said it was just amazing. Aisha said that if they are adventurers of rank B, then it's nothing. Yuri thought that compared to the other adventurers he had met, she was really special. As expected, from an adventurer of rank V Aisha said that the most important thing when using magic is their imagination. There is no shortcut to improving their magic, repetition is the key. Yuri thought that yes, he remembers that something like this from his past life. Aisha pointed her finger at Yuri and said it was his turn now. He shouldn't worry if he doesn't succeed. Yuri said he understood. Seal told him to give it his all. After that, Yuri stepped forward and took out his sword. This surprised Aisha, who thought that he had really drawn a sword. Was there something similar? After that, Yuri used fire magic, a fiery funeral, and finally destroyed the mountain that was in front of them. Were the girls just terrified? Then a system window appeared in front of Yuri, in which it was written that a skill called Acquired Fire Magic, Superclass was acquired. He thought it was great. He even learned Superclass Fire Magic. He is very glad that he came to training. But then he heard a noise. Phil shouted that a landslide was coming. Both girls hugged each other out of fear and started screaming. Yuri used intermediate water magic and created an ice wall. But even that didn't hold up. He thought it was bad, he had to do something about it. Aisha shouted to him that he didn't need to. He should just run away as fast as possible. But Yuri wasn't going to do that. He said he couldn't do it because it was a problem he caused. He's fine, so she shouldn't worry. Aisha was very surprised and wondered what this guy was doing. Yuri thought he wouldn't let the two of them get hurt. And eventually he was able to stop the landslide. After that, a system window appeared in front of him, in which it was written that a skill called water magic acquired from a superclass was also acquired. He thought it was just fine. He learned a new skill again. Phil ran up to him and told him that he had saved them. Aisha looked ahead and asked, what the hell is this? She turned to Yuri and told him that he should just tell her the truth. Who is he? After all this, Yuri came back to Pancho in his bar. Pancho was very glad to see him. He said he was welcome, and immediately recognized him. Did he bring him a dish? Pancho thanked him for waiting and said that this was his special dish called Carpaxio of Bull. Yuri thought that this was the same fish that he caught last time during his search, and it will be his first time when he eats this. Pancho said the steer tasted great, but it was too expensive. It was difficult to cope with this, but, fortunately, the price has recently decreased for it. A good fisherman appeared. By the way, this is part of Aisha's training program. This girl is really amazing. He can't believe how time is changing so fast in their days. Yuri asked if he really knew her. Pancho said that they see each other very often, because she has always been proud of her skills. You can say that she is a very proud person. Yuri asked what does it mean that it is, isn't it? Then someone else came into the bar. Pancho looked at this man and said welcome, let him come in. Apparently, it was another acquaintance of Pancho. Did he call him Mr. Rose? It was Rose by Scotty. Race is a person. His age is 38 years old and his gender is male. Rose greeted Pancho and said it looked like the place was thriving. Pancho thanked him and said it was like a dream, and asked if he could offer him something to drink. For example, wine. The people who were in this bar right now saw Rose and started talking about him. One of the men told them to take a look. It's an iron ingot Rose, isn't it? The other guy confirmed it and said yes, that's him. Rose turned to Yuri and asked if he could sit here. Yuri said yes, of course. Rose said he was on an expedition recently. It had been so long since he had eaten properly. After that, he began to make his order. He said that Baku fried meat and also salad and salami, and also asked for a grilled kebab and dried fish and something to garnish. Then he remembered something and asked if there was a guy named Yuri here. Yuri looked at this man and thought that it seemed they had not met before. Then he said that his name was Yuri. Rose looked at him and said that he had heard about him from Aisha, and he asked what he meant by new, didn't he? Yuri asked if he really knew Aisha, and pointed at Rose with his fork. Pancho looked very surprised and asked what. He called Yuri an idiot and asked what he was doing. He has to put this thing down. Does he have any guesses at all about who this person is? This man is Rose by Scotty. It is also called the Rose of the Iron Ingot. This is the strongest a rank adventurer in this city. Rose said that was too much of an exaggeration. But, as Aisha said, he is a good person with a kind heart. The reason he's looking for it. He wants him to help them with their mission. Yuri looked at this man carefully and asked what was the mission. Rose said that the destruction of the dragon and asked if he could help them in this mission. Pancho almost fell over from what he heard. He was just in shock and asked what? Isn't that too much? This is unreasonable. Whatever they say, but Yuri is just F rank. Rose turned to Yuri and said that no, he was absolutely serious. He just met him today and now he is sure of it. Yuri's abilities are not inferior to them and rank. 
he turned back to Pancho and asked if his rice was not ready yet. Pancho immediately remembered about the food and said that yes, everything is ready. Just at that moment, a girl came into this bar. Meanwhile, the adventurer's guild was very crowded. The leader was commanding everyone, shouting for them to hurry up. Magicians and doctors have already taken measures. Five people are unconscious. Unfortunately, it's too late for the rest of us. The guild staff should once again carefully inspect the building. They must freeze all quests within 50 kilometers of the western plateau. As soon as possible, they should notify all the nearby villages and towns. Then Tiffany came up to him and called out to him. A man was sitting in a wheelchair. Tiffany said it was Captain Lanner, a rank adventurer. The leader asked what happened to him. The man said that the dragon. Rose told Yuri that it was yesterday. The man who survived saw it and lost everything. Pancho said that it was an adventurer with rank who lost his arms and legs. If what he said is true, then. Yuri asked if he really knows something. To which Pancho replied that quite a bit. Did this happen a couple of years ago? The region where the evil dragon appears also changes the ecosystem and the environment. The low-ranking adventurers, who had a hard time, began a battle for several hunting grounds. Rose asked Yuri what he would say. It would be great if he could help them get rid of the evil dragon. Then the same girl came up to them and said she didn't think so. She asked if he really wanted such a weak-looking person to join the squad. Had he gone completely mad? This girl's name is Chloe Dowell. Her race is a dark elf, female gender and age 22. Chloe told Rose that he needed to have his eyesight checked. Is he asking for help from F rank? Everyone will laugh at them. Yuri asked who she was. Rose was about to answer this question, but Chloe interrupted him and said that the third place in the rank, Twilight Chloe. She had also heard about him from Asia. She doesn't know what dexterous he used, but she will tell him. Even after a thousand years, F rank won't adapt to their group. Rose told her that he had already said that an adventurer is not only a rank. It's a terrible habit to measure your abilities by rank. Chloe said that, then how about this? She picked up the fork that was on the plate and said that she had never met a talented F rank before. And she asked what about playing with her. Yuri asked what to play. Chloe told him not to worry because it's not that hard. After that, she dropped this fork from her hands and used magic. Yuri looked slightly surprised and thought that it was his fork. Chloe said she would send her flying with 30% of her strength. If he can repel this attack, then she will recognize him. Yuri has already got up and asked what if he loses. Chloe said that then he should never appear in front of her again. After all, F rank is just F rank, so let him get ready. Then she threw this fork at him. Yuri thought it was so fast. Chloe was already sure that he would not succeed. But her expectations were not met, because Yuri coped with everything perfectly. Chloe was very surprised and asked what. Had he stopped her, Yuri thought that to collect magical energy like this. Now it's her turn to show him how she will block it. Then he threw that fork back. She flew right next to Chloe and hit the wall. The girl said that it was simply impossible. Rose said it looked like the last contestant had already made up his mind. And asked Chloe what's right, right. After that, he turned to Yuri again and asked, so what about this? Yuri thought that he didn't like it very much. But if he refused the offer of an A-rank adventurer, it would become even more difficult to live in this city. So he said okay, he would join them. Rose said they'd see each other tomorrow then. Pancho looked at the wall where the fork was stuck and said in horror that his tavern. Yuri felt ashamed for this, and he said that he would pay for the damaged wall later. The next day, Yuri arrived in the trading city of Lydia, the Western Gate. Yuri said that he said it was here somewhere. Then Rose called out to him and said that it looked like the main star was already here. Chloe and Aisha came along with the router. Aisha told Yuri that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Yuri thought that one a rank and two B rank. If you think about it that way, it's a very good band. Then Rose noticed a lime on Yuri's shoulder and asked why he needed this slime. To which Yuri replied that it was his friend Lime. Chloe said that taming is a rare skill he possesses. After that, they began to get into the cart. Rose apologized to them and said he could only find a small wagon. It's a little cramped in there, but let them be patient. All three eight got into this cart. Aisha told them to move, because it's too crowded here. Chloe said that's why she said to leave the F rank. Aisha looked at Chloe with displeasure and thought that she was taking up too much space with her. Chloe was also dissatisfied, looked at her and thought that she felt amazing pressure from these two. Aisha told her to move a little more. Chloe told her not to push him here. Aisha said it was because her trunks took up too much space. Chloe said she was sorry if she was little Aisha. Aisha didn't like it and asked what she had just said. Then Yuri felt something and thought it was a feeling. And at that moment their cart was broken up. Rose asked what the, what the hell is going on here? They were attacked by a C rank Verna. Her status was tamed. After scanning all this, Yuri thought that they were really tamed. 
is someone controlling them. Meanwhile, Chloe has already applied the initial water magic, and Aisha has applied the initial fire magic. Ice arrows and fireballs flew at these dragons. There was a huge explosion. Yuri looked up and thought that, as expected, from an adventurer of rank A and B they are much stronger and faster. But, Rose said that's not all. He told Chloe and Yuri to take the enemies on the left, and he and Aisha will take care of those on the right. Chloe accepted the order and said yes. Yuri ran after her and asked how they could defeat them. Chloe told him not to call her that casually. He doesn't have to do anything. Would he only delay her? Rose may have a high opinion of him, but she still hasn't recognized him. After that, she once again applied the initial water magic and fired ice arrows. But all the monsters dodged. Then she used intermediate water magic and created an icy rain. Most of the flying monsters hit the ground, and Chloe said it was done. But Yuri stopped her and said that there was no out yet. Now their enemy was the fiery Verna. Her rank was B, and she was also tamed. It was the highest kind of wyvern. Chloe had already prepared for the next attack and asked what he meant by boss, didn't he? But the attack did not even reach this boss, because he was ahead of them and released his fireball. Then Yuri commanded Lime to act. Lime flew straight at that fireball and blocked the wyvern's attack. Chloe was shocked and asked what slime it was. How is it? What the hell is this slime? But then Yuri with commanded her that now. Then Chloe refocused and applied intermediate water magic and created a huge ice spear. Now this Verna was almost destroyed. Chloe said it wasn't enough, but then Yuri rushed forward and said that this was quite enough. He used a special body strengthening magic, and then he finally killed this monster. Chloe was shocked and asked what? What did he do? Yuri asked what he had done. He just jumped, as usual, and killed this flying Verna. Isn't that normal? Chloe screamed that it was completely abnormal. After they finished with all the enemies, they came back to Rose and Aisha, who, apparently, had also already dealt with everyone. Rose, seeing them, said it looked like they were done too. Yuri looked around and thought that they had won two times more than them. There are even two wyverns, meteors. In rank, Aisha's tenth place and this man named Rose is very strong. Rose said they had to hurry now, but there was one problem. If what he thinks is true, then these wyverns were controlled. The girls looked at Rose, surprised and questioning. Aisha said it was simply impossible. Chloe said that in order to control the monsters in the rank. But Yuri interrupted her and said that no, Rose was right. He felt the same way those monsters were being controlled. Rose said that if you think about it that way, Yuri also has a taming skill. Maybe something resonated with him. Yuri said something like that. In fact, he found out because of the analysis. Rose said he understood, but there is another problem. Their horse was very badly injured. Rose said that attack almost killed their horse. Aisha said that this is a problem. If they walk, it will take at least two hours. Yuri thought he could ask Lime to turn into a basilisk, but Lime would be difficult to carry all four of them. Then he asked Rose what, could he take a look at the horse guard? Rose looked at him and asked if he really had an idea. He got up and said that as he mentioned earlier, the horse is in a serious condition. He, of course, can try, but he thinks that it is already impossible to cure her. Chloe said let him try. There's something about him. After that, Yuri approached the horse and applied the sacred mire of the intermediate level. After that, the horse's wounds began to heal. Chloe looked very surprised and asked if it was really holy magic. Recovery magic, isn't it? Aisha asked if it wasn't an urban legend. It just can't be. Rose said he was really healed. Yuri stroked the horse and said it looked like he was fine. Rose called out to him and said he didn't know he could use holy magic. But he must not tell anyone that he owns holy magic. Yuri thought that now that he thought about it, Rico was also surprised by the holy magic. He asked Rose what, why? Is there really any special reason? Rose said that holy magic is very rare, it can attract a lot of unwanted attention. At best, people will hunt for his body and use it to wage war. And that is why it is better not to use this power in public. Yuri smiled slightly and thought that he understood that he was really worried, but he told him that it didn't matter at all. If he sees someone getting hurt, no matter where it is, then he will use it as many times as he wants. Chloe turned to Rose and said that he. She asked that how could he be so carefree. Rose told her not to ask him about it because he was thinking the same thing. After that, the four of them rode on two horses further. Yuri and Aisha were sitting on one horse, and Rose and Chloe on the other. Rose shouted that they should hurry up. There's something going on. Yuri said he understood. But when they arrived at their destination, they were all very surprised. There was nothing left of the clearing. It was completely burned. They dismounted from their horses and began to look around. Rose said it was fine. They would leave the horses here and they would walk further from here. He doesn't know when they will meet the evil dragon, so they have to be careful. Everyone else said it was fine. Further along the way they met various monsters, but they easily defeated them all. 
and after a while they got to the right place. Aisha, having defeated the monster, said that they were distraught since they opposed her. Yuri thought that was expected of adventurers of rank B and above. He didn't have to do anything, because monsters of the rank of both E and D. Rose said that demons are abnormally bloodthirsty, perhaps it's because of the influence of an evil dragon, so they should all be. But then they all felt something and shuddered from it. They all fell to their knees. Rose asked, what kind of pressure is this? Chloe said how hard it was. Then Rose shouted that from above. It was in a rank dragon skeleton, and he was under the influence of taming. Rose said was it really an evil dragon? No, the pressure shouldn't be that strong. Chloe said that how so? It's just ridiculous. Yuri thought that Rose was weaker than him, because this evil dragon is the most powerful in the rank of a Rose said that they should all prepare for battle. But then this dragon with a growl. Everyone felt very weak. Yuri immediately analyzed his condition. A system window flashed in front of him, in which it was said that the roar was of rank B. It makes the creature weaker and shocks it. He thought that this roar was so strong. Does such a skill really exist? If they were novice adventurers, they would immediately faint if they were influenced by this skill. Rose asked, what kind of attack is this? Chloe said she couldn't move. Yuri thought that this attack wouldn't be enough to break them, would it? Then some monster looked down on them and laughed and said that the adventurers of this era are boring as small fish. It was that monster. He said that, but he didn't think he would come here. It was Zach Potnev. Demon race, male gender and age, 231 years old. Zack asked that 926. No, 928. Well anyway it was the little things in the organization. He managed to beat him, didn't he? Yuri immediately remembered Nero, who was number 928, and told Zack that he also had a number. Zack laughed and said he liked that look. He can enjoy his eyes for the last time. But for starters, we need to kill those who interfere with them. Then he snapped his fingers and his dragon flew straight at Rose, Chloe and Aisha. Rose said his body wasn't. But Yuri came to their aid and stopped this dragon. After which, he immediately activated the strike enhancement magic. He has increased his strength and attacked the dragon again. But he said that's not all. And after a few blows, he completely defeated this dragon. Zack, watching all this, said that it would be difficult for an ordinary person to do this. He didn't think he would break his pet. Well, then they will start round two. After that, his dragon recovered again. Yuri managed to dodge his attack and said it was quite dangerous. Still, the monster was able to hit him, and Yuri flew uphill. He thought that an evil dragon. In other words, it's a dragon that doesn't die. The regeneration ability is too funny, and his attack is very strong. What should he do? Zack asked his team if they could move. Chloe said yes, a little. Rose said it was dangerous here and they needed to leave. But then there was a huge explosion, and this explosion touched them all. Yuri noticed this and thought it was bad and applied the initial sacred magic. Now their wounds began to heal. He turned his attention to the dragon at that time, and thought that was he really afraid of sacred magic. Something similar happened during his previous life. There, too, skeletons and ghosts were afraid of sacred objects. If so, then he applied his holy advanced magic on him and applied full recovery. This dragon was completely burned out. Yuri smiled and said that it was good, it seems that it worked. But then Zack laughed and said that he had managed to win with the help of this magic. So they will now start round 3. He went down to him and told him not to look so menacing. He knows what he's going to do, doesn't he? The adventurers of this era are completely worthless, but they think too much about themselves. That's exactly why he's annoyed when he sees an adventurer like him. He wants to kill him. After that, he clenched his palm into a huge fist, rushed straight at Yuri. But Yuri wasn't scared at all, on the contrary, he was very calm now. He easily dodged his attack and thought that he was quite strong but slow. In this case, Nero, whom he defeated earlier, is much. But then Zack hit the ground with his fist. The whole earth began to crack. Yuri was very surprised and even scared. He thought what? What kind of power is this? Zack ran right behind him and said he was disappointed in him. He must die. Yuri dodged his attack again and thought that the wind pressure during the attack. If he got hit, he would be badly hurt, so he needs to get closer to him. It's an overwhelming mysterious force. Zack asked him what had happened. Was he afraid of him? He laughed and said that if that was the case, then first he would destroy his friends. So he jumped right at them. Yuri couldn't let this happen, so he immediately moved to protect his friends and activated the magic to increase strength by three times. Full gain of three times, and rushed straight at Zack. When they collided, there was an explosion. Zack was not hurt at all, laughing, said that he was well on the same level with him. No, and yet for a moment he even surprised him. Unlike Zack, Yuri still suffered a little. He wondered what was wrong with this demon, what kind of power he had. 
Is his magic still not enough? He turned to Lime and told him to take everyone to a safe place. Then Zack rushed at him again and asked what he was looking at. Yuri dodged the attack again and thought that if he could not defeat him in an open clash, then he would attack him from behind. He took out his sword and tried to plunge it into the back of this demon. But the sword didn't even enter it. And at that moment, Zack swung his arm at him. Yuri noticed her at the last moment and thought, Oh shit. The registry office said he was a weakling. This time he was still able to inflict damage on Yuri. Zack started shouting that he was an insignificant ant. He is sorry that he is so weak. But Yuri was not going to give up. He got back to his feet and applied the initial sacred magic. And began to recover. He thought that it really takes a very long time to fully recover. He understood. He had used up quite a lot of mana during the day today. He should use his mana more carefully. Then Zack turned to him again and asked what happened. Has he already given up? Yuri, having fully recovered, thought that now was not the best time to doubt. He tightened his grip on the hilt of his sword and was already ready for battle. Zack had already jumped on him and said they needed to have more fun. Yuri began to move deftly again and thought that he was using all his strength for this blow there was nothing that could not be cut with this technique. He needs to find the time, shift the weight and choose the right stance. After he did all this, then he applied strength enhancement along with reinforcement and shock diffusion. He thought that in an instant he would have to swing the point of the sword. He attacked Zack with his holy blade. This time he managed to inflict damage. He cut off this demon's hand. The registry office screamed and asked what happened. He's usually human. He trembled and, looking at Yuri, said that this sword. It's a technique. Isn't it that guy's technique? Yuri tensed up and thought, what about that guy? Zack summoned his dragon again and said it was fun. Jumping on his dragon, he said that he remembered it. Someday he will repay him in kind. Zack has already taken off, but Yuri wasn't going to just let him go and said he could forget about it right now. And he used a special fire magic, a fire tornado. The registry office asked what, but it was too late. Yuri was very exhausted and fell to the ground. He thought he was tired this time, but the mission was safely completed. Meanwhile, Rose, Chloe and Aisha came to their senses. They were in a safe place now, as Lime had moved them here. Yuri was already here, too. When he saw that they were starting to come to their senses, he got up and said that it looked like they had woken up. After they finally came to their senses completely, he told them everything. Rose asked if he had really defeated the dragon. He can't believe it. In his opinion, this evil dragon must have had the strength of an S-grade rank. Yuri thought, is he really that strong? He was able to accidentally defeat the evil dragon with the help of holy magic. He asked them that, by the way, how should he divide it? He opened his space and took out a huge dark magic stone. It barely fit in his hands. This stone was a grade. This magic stone has the power of darkness. Yuri said that when he defeated the evil dragon, he fell out of it. How to divide it into four equal parts? They asked in unison, is it really a magic stone? Rose said he was surprised. He had never seen a magic stone like this. He smiled and said that, unfortunately, they had no right to take him. This magic stone is completely his. Aisha said that's right, he's his. Chloe also supported them and said yes, let him take it. Still, Rose warned him and told him to be careful. This magic stone will increase the power of the country or destroy it depending on how he uses it. Yuri thought it was understandable, but that's okay. He plans to use this magic stone as an amplifier for Lime, and he said it was good. Thus, the group completed the quest and went back home. But something happened the next day. Yuri, as always, slept on Lime. But then, already waking up, he thought that the floor was so cold. But he was sleeping on Lime. Slowly, coming to himself, he called out to Lime. But I didn't find it under me. There was a little girl lying next to him. Apparently it was Lime. When Yuri finally came to his senses, he thought, who is this? Lime also woke up and rushed right at him to hug. Yuri thought that this voice, this strange smell. He asked, what is Lime really? And the girl nodded happily. Yuri thought that, but why does he look like that? He looked at the table and thought that he had left a dark magic stone here. Do they really want to say that? He asked Lime that he ate it, didn't he? Lime confirmed it. Yuri thought that nevertheless, after eating the dark magic stone, he acquired a human form. Lime even called his name. This surprised Yuri and he thought that he had really spoken. The girl clung to the chair and, continuing to call him, tried to get up. Yuri thought it was dangerous. Has he never seen this before? But still the girl could not get up and fell again. Yuri said that it's not bad, but it's hard to determine whether it's good for Lime that he has become closer to people. He patted Lime on the head and said he didn't need to imitate them. He's pretty good as it is. Then Lime took his form again and sat on his shoulder. Yuri suggested that he go and work a little. Lime supported this idea. 
After that, they went to the Adventurers Guild together. Yuri thought they should look at today's quests. He began to study all the quests and thought that Goblin and Kama are wolves, wolves, goblins. All the quests were basically the same, and Yuri thought that these quests were not very good. He shouted from the second floor, some old man and called out to Yuri. He jumped down and walked right up to him. Yuri asked what he needed. But the old man stopped him and told him to wait 30 seconds. Yuri thought that his legs were clearly hurting. After that, the man said that he made him wait. His name is Dutch, and he is an adventurer with rank 8th place. He is a very skilled hunter of rare monsters. Yuri thought, what kind of old man is this? A mouse appeared next to Dutch, and he said he was Leon, his assistant. Yuri looked surprised and thought it was amazing. He understands him. He thinks he's as smart a monster as Lime. Dutch asked him that he was looking for assignments, wasn't he? Yuri said yes. Then Dad asked if you would like to work with him today. He's a rookie, isn't he? This is not just a quest that hangs on the bulletin board. This is a special quest. Yuri looked at the bulletin board again and thought that he didn't really like being asked like that. But he didn't think there were other good quests. So he said, well, if that's the case, then he'll go with him today. Dutch said he knew his brother would agree, so he would take care of him. After that, they took a cart and set off. Dutch said it meant he had recently become an adventurer. Yuri said that yes, to be honest, he doesn't know a lot of things, and that's why it would be nice if he could share information with him. Dutch told him to listen to him. As the eldest, he will teach him a lot. They were sold a bad wagon. He'll complain when he gets home. And he asked that yes, by the way, he had contact with mucus, didn't he? There are many kinds of slime, but this slime is clearly common, isn't it? Yuri asked if there really are other types of mucus. Dutch said that yes, blue slime is the weakest among them and monsters. It's a bad idea to contract with a weak monster. He won't say anything bad to him, but he has to make a new contract with another monster. If he doesn't mind, then he can recommend a monster to him. Yuri looked at Lime and said no, he thinks it's necessary. Lime may look weak, but he's his sword. The man laughed and told him not to lie to him. Yuri calmly replied that he had not lied. The man, still laughing, said that if this slime is really so strong, then he should give up the title of hunter of rare monsters. But then their cart still could not stand it and fell apart. Yuri contacted Lime. Lime understood what he needed to do without words, so he immediately increased in size and caught all the passengers. Yuri thanked Lime for this. When he got off him, he asked the man if he was okay. Dutch also got off the Lime and asked what he was hiding. He hadn't heard that the slime could be so big. How did he sign a contract with an unusual slime? He's right, isn't he? Yuri asked that didn't he just say that blue slime is the weakest? And then Dutch realized that he was wrong. And he said that, well, yes. Now Dutch was repairing the cart, and Yuri was helping him. Yuri asked, what is the Valley of Dragons? Dutch looked at him and asked what? Didn't he know about Dragon Valley? Dragon Valley is a holy land, didn't he know that? Yuri thought that the holy land. Dutch said that dragons with terrifying fighting power and overwhelming energy live there. The valley, where such dragons gather, began to be called a holy place. Yuri said that he understood and asked, is that why this is a holy place? Dutch said he really didn't know anything. Catching a dragon is a man's dream. That is why he asks his brother to help him in the search for a young dragon. Yuri said it was an amazing goal. Dutch said that of course it's a dangerous job, but he shouldn't worry, because he has a great idea. Now, when dragons nest, they tend to be quite dangerous. He has lost his skills, and now he doesn't have half of his former strength. But if you catch a young dragon, you can sell it at a high price. Yuri said that, as expected, he knows a lot of things. Dutch laughed and clapped him on the shoulder, saying that of course, he has great potential as his assistant. After some time, they had already repaired the cart and were driving on. Dutch was telling him something all the time and said that in this way the success of his work spread across the country. Dragon Hunter, he was called that before he found out about it. Amazing, isn't it? Yuri said that, as expected from him. He really is a great hunter. Dutch laughed again and said it was true. Yuri said that by the way, he was very curious. He has so many merits, but why is he in 8th place from the rank? The censor exhaled and said it was really amazing, but it wasn't really appreciated and he didn't want to stand out. Yuri said he understood, as expected of him. Dutch said it was. Then they made a small halt, after which they continued their journey again. After some time, they arrived at their destination and Dutch said that they had arrived. This is the Valley of the Dragons. In order to see the dragons, they have to climb this mountain. Yuri asked what they would do. Dutch pointed at Leon and said that's where he comes in. He tied a rope to it and said that like this. After that, Li Yi began to climb this mountain. After climbing this mountain, he tied a rope to a stone. Yes, I praised him. Then he grabbed the rope and began to climb up. 
Yuri thought that they were just perfect partners, he had a lot to learn. After that, the two of them climbed this mountain together. Dutch asked if he was tired. They certainly haven't gone far, but he still has plenty of strength. Yuri said he was fine. Dutch, apparently, was already exhausted and said that it was good. He asked that then he didn't need a break, did he? Then they need to move on. But then monsters appeared in front of them. One of them asked, what kind of monsters are these? Yuri immediately analyzed them and realized that they were kobolds of rank D. Dutch said kobolds are quiet, friendly and human-like. All this can be understood by their appearance and habits. Yuri thought it was easy to get along with them, but he feels that they are quite hostile towards them. Dutch said that okay, as an older brother, he would explain everything. There are two main ways to tame them. One way is to fight, two way is to use food in order to build friendly relations with them. Yuri thought he understood. When he tamed Lime as a companion, he used dried meat. Dutch reached for the food and said it was better to use the food. For them, the best dishes are dango. He cooked them at night. Yuri plugged his nose and wondered what it was. It looks very bad, and the smell is disgusting. Dutch grinned and said it was the best bait. He started waving the monster and said they needed to make friends. He approached one of the monsters and asked if he wanted it. Delicious, isn't it? But the monster was clearly not happy. He pounced right on him. Then Dutch got very scared and, hugging Leon, started screaming. He began to ask for help. Then Yuri rushed to his aid and stood right in front of them in order to protect them. He fought off this monster's attack and thought that for a rank D monster, they were surprisingly fast. They are surprisingly quick-witted, and he is convinced that they are smarter than D rank. Then Yuri demonstrated his strength. He thought that unlike humans, monsters seemed to understand the opponent's abilities. He told him that he would leave them to him. Lime understood his order and immediately began to execute it. He dealt with all these monsters in the blink of an eye and returned to Yuri again. Yuri praised him. Dutch was still shaking with fear and asked what it was. Has he captured all the monsters? After that, they tied up all these monsters. Yuri said it was obvious, but the kobolds were forced to live like this because of the dragons. It seems that there is a nest of dragons further down this section. And I asked the monster that if everything was fine, could he show the way? Dutch asked if he really understood the language of monsters, to which Yuri replied that yes. The man said he couldn't believe it. He can't believe anyone understands monsters. How is it? Yuri asked that don't hunters understand the language of monsters. Dutch said he would get in trouble if he offended them. He does not know the language of monsters, then he refuses the name of a rare monster hunter. Yuri thought he understood. Dutch is an amazing person. The monster said something to him, to which Yuri replied that it was fine. Then let him show the way. Dutch said okay, they should go. Yuri asked if he was really worried. Dutch asked why he was worried. Of course not. After that, they followed this monster. Yuri said that it looks like it's still a long way to the top. And he told this monster, whom he called by the name of Vankichi, to continue to show the way. Dutch was surprised and asked, what is Vankichi? Yuri asked what and what. Dutch said he has a unique ability to give nicknames. He looked at this monster and said that well, it looks like he likes it. Yuri held out his hand to this monster and said that it was good, his name was Vankichi. The monster liked it very much, so he rushed on to show them the way. Dutch said that, and he's full of enthusiasm. But then the road narrowed. The man said it was harder than he thought. He turned to Yuri and said that from now on he should be very careful. Yuri said it was good. But then Dutch broke and flew down. Yuri immediately called out to Lime, who immediately began to act. Lime managed to get them out. The man and Leon were very scared. Dutch said that thanks a lot to Leon, because he had already seen the light, and also thanked Lime. Then they heard the terrible roar of Venkichi. They immediately ran to this roar, and Yuri said that it looked like they were getting a little closer to the top. The man agreed with him and said that yes, it looks like that. But the monster kept screaming. The man asked what happened. But when they ran up, they realized what was the matter. A huge stone blocked their way. Dutch asked what? What is this stone? Why is he in such a place? And they have no other way. He doesn't want to go back over the cliff. If he had to go back, he would definitely die. Then he brought his thumb to his mouth and bit it until it bled. He began to draw something on the stone and told Yuri to look. This is his special guy. Then he summoned the golem. Yuri thought that he remembered. He often used this technique. He used it when he was a mage emperor. This is summoning magic. Dutch said it was his golem. His golem was of D rank. The man ordered the golvoi to remove this stone from his path. The golem immediately accepted the order and went to execute it. But he wasn't very good at it, so Dutch and Leon decided to join. The man turned to Yuri and said that they did not have enough strength. He asked if he would help him. Yuri said that now. He assessed the whole situation and told the man that it was dangerous, and asked if he could stand aside for a bit. 
The man looked at him in surprise and saw that Yuri had taken out a sword. He asked what he was doing. Yuri told him to just watch. Dutch wondered what he was up to. Yuri walked up to this stone and swung his sword. After that, the stone fell apart into two parts. Dutch immediately ran up to him and asked that how could he use such a sword technique. It's impossible to be both a swordsman and a tamer at the same time. He devoted his whole life to this profession. Yuri thought that he had already been told that it was quite difficult to master different skills. He's going to live his three life peacefully, and he's not going to be like that. He can easily gain new skills through memories and from his past lives. So after that, they continued on their way and headed to the dragon's lair. After some time, the man stopped and pointed his finger forward, said that this was it. The place they were looking for. Yuri asked what he really meant about this cave. The man took off his backpack from his back and started looking for something in it. He said yes, he's finally here, and offered Yuri to take a break and eat. Yuri agreed and said that it was good. But then he felt something and tensed up. Dutch was already unpacking with might and main and said so, milk, sugar, meat. But then Yuri called out to him. The man asked what happened. Yuri told him to be quiet. It looks like someone is here and has already reached for his sword. Dutch asked what? Why? Are there people in this place? Yuri looked very serious and said he was coming. But then Aisha came out of the cave. Dutch looked very surprised and asked if Aisha was really a thorn. Yuri asked her what she was doing here. Aisha said that the right time has passed since their last assignment. Yuri asked if she had really come to kill the dragon. Aisha asked that why would she kill a dragon. Yuri said that she is in the mountains where the dragons are, so he wonders if she is going to kill a powerful dragon. Aisha said not this time, rather the opposite. Yuri asked what she meant. Aisha said she came here to kill those who are trying to hunt dragons illegally. Yuri said that everything is used in dragons, from bones to skin. Aisha said that dragon materials are used for everything, not just swords and armor. That's why the guild has a strict limit on dragon quests, and that's why she's looking at the place where the dragons are. Then she spotted Dutch and called out to him. She asked if he wasn't a wandering dragon hunter. The man got angry and, showing her his license, said that it was disrespectful, he was actually an adventurer. Aisha said that if you look closely, then she knows him. Yuri asked what she meant. Aisha said that this old man is known for telling newcomers about his heroic deeds. Only with the help of the ignorance of the newcomers, he rose to the rank of C. Yuri thought that oh, because if you think about it, the stories of this man are so perfect that they don't seem plausible. So these stories were lies. He asked the man that didn't he take 8th place in the C rank. It doesn't look good. Yuri grabbed his head and thought that with the help of lies he would not get the power he wanted. Dutch fell to his knees and begged his forgiveness. He said that, of course, he had done something for which he could not be forgiven, and it could not be changed. But now he has come to his senses. He swears that he will improve. He has to believe him. Aisha asked Yuri that this old man can really be trusted. Yuri hesitated and was about to say something, but they both felt something. They were immediately ready to fight, and the girl said that they would leave it for later. Yuri agreed with her and said that it was good, and he himself thought that they were surrounded. These must be the people Aisha was talking about. They are illegally engaged in dragon hunting. They must have blocked the road with a big stone. Aisha asked him if he would take on those on the right. She'll take half of it. After that, she took her weapon called Yurumi, which was rank V. Yuri said he had an idea and asked if she could leave them all to him. He needs to try something. Then he brought his thumb to his mouth and bit it until it bled. Dutch said it was. Yuri calling the kobolds. The man said there were so many of them. How is it? Did he summon several at the same time? Then one of these monsters appeared next to him. The man shuddered and asked if it was really Venkichi. Yuri ordered all the monsters to kill all the suspicious people around. But what Yuri saw surprised him very much. He thought that, wasn't the kobold a small D-rank monster? The man who was hiding behind the rocks here got scared and said they had to run. Yuri contacted these monsters and told them to go after them. Aisha asked why the hell are they so strong? If you look at their movement, they are at least rank C. No, they have the power of monsters of rank B. Dutch said that he heard that monsters can raise their rank with the power of the theme. Maybe he. Yuri asked him what he said. The man said nothing. He is his most talented student. Meanwhile, those men came running into the cave, in which, apparently, their leader was sitting. The man asked what happened. The guy said it was trouble. They met three people, among them Aisha Ternavea, as well as a Danish of rank C, who is engaged in the 30th place, and a newcomer Yuri of rank F. Their leader said that Aisha Ternavea is a problem woman, and he asked that the wound was inflicted by the same woman, wasn't it? But the man said no, it's not. He was wounded by Yuri. Their leader got up and asked that he was wounded by the F rank. The man said he was one of the most famous people in the world. 
The leader, apparently, got very angry because of this and said that it could not be that some F rank was so strong. He went up to this guy and, grabbing him by the head, said that he had come up with a good idea. This guy asked what he was doing. The man picked up this guy with one hand and said that some small fish of F rank had beaten them. He would have believed that it was Aisha, because he has known her for a long time. He doesn't like it when his friends lie, especially when they are younger than him, so they need to get rid of the liar. Then he killed with this guy. Anges is going to get rid of the F rank. Meanwhile, Yuri and the others have already entered this cave. Aisha thanked him for helping to deal with the robbers. Dutch looked at the girl with displeasure and said that it was. Aisha asked what. The man couldn't stand it and asked why she was chasing them. They had already gotten rid of the robbers, so she had to get behind them. Aisha said it was her job and she still didn't trust him. And that's why I thank them for their overtime work. The man asked if she really thinks she's better just because she's a B rank and he's a C rank. He has life experience and that's why he's better here. And called her a little girl. Aisha didn't like it, so she knocked him down. Yuri, looking at this, thought that they were getting along very well. Aisha turned to Yuri and said that nevertheless, every time she sees him, he always surprises her. He absorbs sword skills and magic skills like a sponge. Dutch said he was also surprised when he was summoning monsters. Yuri asked if it was so unusual. Aisha and Dutch simultaneously replied that of course it was unusual. Yuri thought that, after all, they were good friends. Then the man felt something. He looked at Van Kitchi and asked if he smelled like fish or something. Yuri also looked at the monsters and asked what happened. Aisha told the man that it was almost next to the House of Dragons. The man looked at her and asked, is it really true? But then he looked ahead and realized that the girl was telling the truth. They were trapped in the dragon's den. Dutch gaped in surprise and said it was just amazing. These are dragons. They are incredible. One of the dragons was a B-rank celestial dragon. That man noticed the eggs and said there were so many treasures. He began to look around and explore the whole area. He got close to those eggs and apologized to the dragons. But at that moment, the dragon noticed him. Yuri thought it was just a terrible thirst for murder. It seems to him that for the first time in his life he feels such a strong thirst. The man turned to Yuri and told him to help him. He should take the eggs and get out of here. Yuri said they've come this far, but he can't do it. He thought that he had come here and realized that their children were very important to the dragons. No matter how much they say that they are monsters on, he feels that it is impossible to take these eggs. Aisha supported him and said it was a wise decision. Dragons are smarter than people think. If he was lucky enough to escape from here, they would still find and kill him. Even though they weaken during mating, they still won't leave here if they attack altogether. The man shouted that he thought it was a great KVS in order to hit the jackpot. Then someone said about the man, so that he would not give up. Those guys came here, and their leader turned to Aisha, who said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Aisha said it was his guys. Then Yuri was caught off guard. A man appeared behind him, who grabbed him and put a knife to his throat. He told him not to move. Anges told Aisha that he was very surprised. He can't believe she's on a mission with an f rank trash. She hurt his guys, so she wouldn't mind if he cut off the arms and legs of that trash, would she? Aisha sighed and told this man that she felt sorry for him. The man pointed his finger at Yuri and asked the girl what she was talking about in such a situation. Aisha said that he was wrong in choosing an opponent. At that moment, Yuri easily escaped from the clutches of that man and hit him. Which one of these guys did you ask? What's going on? Who is this guy? They have to kill him. But Yuri easily dealt with all the others. After some time, he finally got everyone. He dusted off his hands and exhaled. Only Anges remained. He pulled out his sword, rushed straight at Yuri, hoping to catch him off guard. But it didn't work out for him, because Yuri was faster than him. The man thought that how could this happen? Yuri thought that this guy was not bad. Aisha told Yuri not to underestimate him. Yuri asked if she really knew him. Aisha said she knows him very well. His name is Anges Rukori. He was a young genius adventurer of rank B. The man threw away the rest of his sword and said that this sword was useless. Then he'll use something better. He took out a bottle of Naha herb extract. Rank D. The extract of this herb creates a toxic effect and clouds the mind. The man threw this bottle and, laughing, said that it was a special extract that he created specifically for dragons. He threw this extract directly at the dragon. In addition, his clothes are soaked with a smell that the dragon hates. When this extract took effect, the dragon became enraged. The man shouted that it was over, and called Yuri. He turned to Aisha and said that she too. Yuri was the only one who was calm now and thought he understood. He uses this dragon to kill them. At that moment, the dragon swung its huge paw right at them and attacked. The man thought that it was all over and, laughing, told them to know their place. They're all going to die now. But Yuri held this dragon's paw with his hand. 
The man did not expect this in any way and asked what is it. Had he stopped the dragon's attack? You returned to this dragon and said that everything was fine. There is nothing to be afraid of. He was just afraid of sudden changes. The extract that this man used intensified the fear that was in the dragon. After all these words of Yuri, the dragon came to himself again. Dutch asked if he wasn't dangerous. Aisha said it looked like it. The man was very shocked and said that this simply could not be. Yuri stretched out his hands to this dragon. The dragon lowered its head to him. Yuri started stroking him and said he was a good boy. A system window popped up, in which it was written that the heavenly dragon of rank B was now under the influence of the taming skill, and also a skill called advanced level taming was obtained. The man still could not believe his eyes and asked what was wrong. How could he stop the dragon? As usual, F-rank adventurers were able to do something like this. Yuri pointed his finger at this man and said that it was fine, he was giving it to him. After that, the dragon exploded from the spot and rushed straight at this man. They all saw some strange light. One of them asked, what kind of light is this? The dragon has awakened its power. He was now a D-rank heavenly dragon. He was under the influence of the taming skill, awakening. Yuri thought he didn't know what awakening was like, but the dragon's movements had clearly become faster. The dragon managed to catch up with this man and grabbed him with his paw. Now the man was immobilized. The dragon took off with him. The man asked what he was doing. Should he let him go? He has to get his paws off him. The dragon flew high enough above the volcano and threw a man right inside this volcano. Yuri said it looked like it was over. Dutch said that, but it's not a joke. Had he tamed the dragon? Yuri said yes. After that, they also tied up all those guys who obeyed that man. Aisha said she thinks that's it. She pointed her finger at Lime and told Yuri that nevertheless, his mucus is so comfortable. She will ask the guild for support. Then a bird flew to her shoulder just the same. It was an F-rank raven messenger. His status was decorated. Aisha gave this bird a letter and told her to deliver it. Then this raven took the letter and flew away. Yuri asked that, by the way, where did Dutch go? Aisha pointed to the rock and said that the old man was there. Now the men were digging up treasures together with Leon. And, apparently, they found something. They were very jubilant, and the man shouted that it was a treasure. All the treasures here are his. Yuri turned to Aisha and said that this. Aisha asked what was going on here at all. After which, he applied the analysis and realized that it was dragon dung of rank F. It was just ordinary waste. Yuri asked why Dutch was so happy. Aisha said she had no idea what the old man was happy about. Yuri said that he said that he had a lot of debts due to a failure in business. Aisha said she wondered if he was crazy. Yuri looked at the old man again and thought that he understood everything and felt a little sorry for him. Then the dragon, whom he had only recently tamed, turned to him and pointed to his skin. It was a B-grade dragon skin. This is the skin that was left after the molting of the dragon. Yuri asked if he was really giving it away. After that, Yuri called out to Dutch. The man immediately went down and started thanking him. He said that he would be grateful to him until his death. Yuri said it was good. And something else, and called out to the kobold, which he also tamed. The kobolds were driven out by the dragons, and that's why Yuri decided to mediate between the dragons and the kobolds. Thanks to the high level of taming, the negotiations ended well, and they divided the territory. After that, he and Aishi returned to the Adventurer's Guild. Aisha gave him a reward and thanked him for helping her with this task. Yuri looked very surprised and asked if it was really all for him. Aisha said that, of course, because he finished this task alone. Well, it's time for her to go. But Yuri stopped her and asked if he could ask her one last question. It's about Anges. She knows something, doesn't she? The girl sighed and said that she would tell him, but this is an old story. They must have been friends once. The man saved her from the monster and said she was still alive. And he called her baby. Aisha got very angry at this and hit him, saying that she was not his baby. The guys who were with them said that they are the best in their field and their abilities are outstanding. They were different in both age and gender, but they were both promoted to C-rank and they worked hard together. But one day, on this day, Aisha came to the Adventurer's Guild to get a new license. They apologized to her for making her wait, and also congratulated her on becoming a B-rank adventurer today. They began to praise her and said that it was simply excellent. She rose so quickly, as expected from Aisha. This is the Guild's hope. Anges was also there, and he clearly didn't like all this. He couldn't let her get ahead of him. After that, he went to some guy, whom he began to beat. He grabbed him by the collar and started demanding something from him. The man was scared and told him to wait a little longer, because it took him five days to find this herb. But the man didn't even let him finish and asked if he was really complaining. He couldn't. But then Aisha came up. She said there was a report from the guild the other day. He took the money from an adventurer of a lower rank. 
And apparently, the report was true. The men did not hide anything and said yes. Then he just left. Aisha said that after that, his adventurer's license was taken away from him, and he disappeared from the city. She never thought that they would meet again in such a place. Yuri said that's it. Aisha said she couldn't save him, and then she suddenly asked him if he knew where an adventurer who took the path of evil after his death got to. Yuri said no, he didn't know. Aisha said that many of her are licensed to the Dark Guild. Many of them belong to criminal organizations, they are used by even worse people. Yuri is very strong, and she admits it. But sometimes when she's with him, she feels like she's looking at a newborn baby. His abilities are a grade, but his mind is F grade. Yuri thought that, but he's only been living in this world for about six months. Aisha said she feels like a mother with a child she can't afford right now. She pointed her finger at him and said there would be a monthly seminar next week. He will definitely have to join them, because she will train his mind. After all, Anges managed to survive. He asked that why did it happen that way. Then he was able to see the gap and managed to escape. Now he was very angry and clenching his hand into a fist, hit it on the rock and thought that it was all him. If that f rank jerk wasn't there, he started shouting, what the hell, and a comma, and this jerk. He couldn't get the dragon's heart. Then a woman appeared behind him, who laughed and said that it seemed that he was very worried. And she asked him that he needed her help, didn't she? The man looked at her and asked, what is Killy? This girl came up to him and, touching his forehead with her finger, said that his name was Yuri. This is the name of the adventurer who defeated him. The man recoiled from her and asked what? He'll get what he needs soon, so let them give him a little more time. But Killy said no, she changed her mind. He doesn't need to take out this item anymore. The man at some point even rejoiced and said that then. But then the woman snapped her fingers, and the man began to change. Killy laughed and said that, and he's handsome. The man turned into a monster. Killy thought she didn't think she would find the archenemy who took her brother's life so quickly. Meanwhile, Yuri was still sleeping. Phil came to him again and started waking him up. She asked if he was really awake. Yuri immediately jumped up and said that why did she come so early in the morning? Phil asked what happened. She had told him that today was the day of the training of newcomers. Yuri remembered Aisha's words and thought that, by the way, Aisha had advised him to join them. Phil looked around his new room and said that nevertheless he had moved into a very large room. Yuri said that yes, he had an additional income, and that's why he took the plunge and moved. Phil asked, where's the lime? Yuri asked if he was really not in the next room, and asked Lime that he wasn't sleeping, and he thought that Phil had been energetic since the morning. At that moment, Phil had already gone to the other room in order to find Lime, and then Yuri heard screams from there. The girl was knocked to the floor by kobolds. She asked that who are they. Yuri thought that he had forgotten. Phil began to ask him for help. After some time, they finally gathered and left Yuri's room and they went to the Adventurer's Guild. Yuri, apparently, told her everything, so Phil said that in other words, the spawning can't leave his nest, and that's why kobolds temporarily live with him. Yuri said that yes, that's right. Phil said she was very surprised that there were these monsters in his room. Yuri apologized to her for surprising her so much. After that, they finally came to practice. Everyone had gathered a long time ago and Aisha, coming forward, wished everyone a good morning and called them fools. She said that the great Aisha Senpai came to them again this month. She looked everyone over and said she was impressed. Everyone is already here. Some man asked, is that really all? The other guy said there used to be about 10 people, didn't he? Aisha said that three people have died in the last month, and she heard that one came voluntarily and returned his license. The man was very shocked and asked if three people were really dead. Aisha said that there were more than half of them left in a month, and this is already a success. Yuri thought that he understood this, because this is the reality of adventurers. Aisha asked, what do they understand now? The work of adventurers is not fun and adventure. If they want to live, they must continue to go to training. This man said that well, he would follow her instructions, and he asked what the hell should they do. Aisha was very pleased with this, and she said that she finally had the right attitude. Today they will perform a special training. She took out a bag and said that here, this is a garbage collection training. They have to collect all the garbage. Aisha said that today's training is garbage collection. They will pick up garbage all over the city until there is nothing left. This clearly did not please the majority of those present. The man asked what is garbage collection. Are they idiots, in her opinion? The man who was standing next to him asked, What does this have to do with survival at all? But Aisha was adamant and said they would figure it out as soon as they did. If they don't try now, they'll find out for the rest of their lives. Each of them should listen to her very carefully. Their work will end only when the bags are full. After that, they all went out into the city and started their work. The man asked what and why the hell they should do it. The guy said it was so much trouble. 
Despite the way they lazily picked up all the garbage, Phil clearly wasn't going to stay here for a long time. She worked very smartly. After only a few seconds, she had already filled one bag. Yura was surprised and said that she was so fast. She already has half a whole bag. Phil grinned and said that her legs have been trained since she worked in the fields as a child. For her, it's a big deal. Yuri looked at his empty bag and thought that it was clear. He also did not need to lag behind. So he immediately got down to business. He and Phil worked together on a par. After a while, Phil said it was just amazing. He's almost done. Yuri said that yes, he himself was surprised that he could collect so much. He had never noticed that there was so much garbage in the city. Phil agreed with him and said that yes, you can collect a whole bag in a couple of hours. Then Aisha came up to them and said that it seemed that they were the only ones who would fulfill the norm by the deadline. She asked, what's up? Did they understand anything after collecting so much garbage? Yuri said that yes, he realized that this job is not easy. However, he did not understand how this was related to the survival of the adventurer. Aisha said that if he only understood that, then, unfortunately, she could only give him 50 points out of 100. Yuri asked what, but what is the answer for getting the other 50 points? Aisha almost laughed, but restrained herself in time and told him to listen to her very carefully. There are two types of people in this world, those who collect garbage and those who pick it up. After all, garbage does not disappear by itself. If, as an adventurer, he wants to live a long life, then he will need to have proper ethics. And he lacks it. Yuri is surprised, he looked at her and asked what ethics. Aisha said that you don't have to think much. He should just remember that it is important not to be the one who throws garbage. Anges, despite his talent, chose the wrong path. When someone goes to his goal, he forgets about others and may even get hurt one day. And she just really wants him to understand that. Devoting himself to his goals, he must also remember others. Then one day someone will come to his aid. Now Yuri apparently understood. He thought it was understandable. He can live out his days as an adventurer thanks to everyone's support. But all this would not have happened if he was a rotten scumbag through and through. After they finished their conversation, Phil carefully examined the territory and, seeing garbage nearby, ran straight to him and shouted to Yuri that there was a lot of garbage there. But she wasn't very careful, she didn't notice the man she bumped into. The man looked at her menacingly and told her to look where she was going, and called her a brat. Phil was very scared and, rushing to the leak, apologized. Yuri stood aside and watched it. After that, the man returned to the conversation. He told his friend that in the end that girl said she wouldn't drink anymore and started crying. His friend laughed and said it was so cruel, and threw the garbage on the ground. Yuri noticed it, and he clearly didn't like it, so he decided not to leave it like that. He went to these men and called out to them. He showed the cigarette butt that the man had thrown and asked what about cleaning up after himself. The man asked, what did he say? Does he have something against that? Yuri said that the whole city is in garbage because of egoists like them. A man came up to him and asked, is this really so? Well, does he see? He took this cigarette butt out of Yuri's hands and threw it on the ground again. Then they laughed out loud and said that they actually give such brats as they work. After all, untalented low-ranking ones like them are only useful in garbage collection. And now he has to go and pick up this garbage. He has to do his job. Yuri turned to Aisha and called out to her. The girl stopped and, looking at him, asked, what is it? Yuri, pointing his finger at these men and asked that it was okay, because if he would refer the likes of them to garbage. The man clearly did not expect this and was asked what he had just said. Aisha told him that sometimes it is important to act as a judge yourself, so he has to do as he knows. Then this man came up to him and, calling him an asshole, swung in order to hit him. Yuri deftly dodged his attack and, grabbing the man by the arm, knocked him to the ground. A friend of this man rushed to his rescue. He called Yuri a scumbag. Yuri thought that these guys, he needs to make sure that they no longer dare to throw out cigarette butts. And he applied the initial fire magic, Gorange. After that, the hair on this guy's head started to burn. He started screaming that his head. Then the man whom Yuri knocked down came to himself. He asked what. At that moment, Yuri used advanced wind magic. He lifted these men up, then threw them into the trash. He told them that he hoped they had learned their lesson and would no longer throw garbage on the street. Meanwhile, people were sitting in some kind of tower. Apparently, they had some advice. Then someone came into the huge hall and, turning to Modalit, said that there was urgent news. The man asked what kind. This guy came up to him and whispered something in his ear. The man looked surprised and asked what. Was number 230 defeated? Is it really true? He's a fierce demon with excellent abilities even among demons. Did the guy tell him that it was? They analyzed the traces and found that the evil dragon that Zack was raising had been killed. 
Then some guy turned to this man and said that he should just let him do this job. He will definitely kill that dude. The guy who was sitting next to him laughed and said that a simple person would be like an ant. He only has to become more serious. Then Killy turned to everyone and told the boss to leave it to her. Everyone immediately looked at her and asked if she had really returned. Killy said yes and apologized for being so late. She was asked if she had any plan. Killy said it was easy. But then two guys attacked her from both sides. One of them laughed and asked that she was a two-digit, wasn't she? The other guy also laughed and said that if he killed her, he would become a two-digit number. Noki Killy wasn't that simple. She touched two fingers to the foreheads of these men and said that, in short, she just had to set two people against each other. Then she destroyed them. Meanwhile, in the Adventurers Guild, people were choosing tasks for themselves. Someone asked that why wouldn't she try it? To which he was told that he would not risk his life for anything. Because it doesn't matter how much money they offer. He values his life the most. Then Yuri asked some guy what he was talking about. This guy told him to take a look at it, and pointed him to the task, which was called the Conquest of Ogres. The rank requirement is being discussed. The mission is to defeat one ogre. The reward is 20,000 gil. Repetition is possible. Yuri looked at it in surprise and thought, what kind of monster is this? He also saw a special task. It was necessary to subdue the ogre king. The requirement for the rank is A. The mission is to defeat one ogre king. Awards, 2 million gil. Repeat is not possible. Yuri was surprised to think that the A rank was really needed to defeat the Ogre King. It also means that even Aisha and Chloe can't complete this task. Someone asked, is this monster really that strong? To which he was told that of course, an Ogre is a creature that many people are afraid of. Oh, they are very fierce, belligerent and their strength exceeds that which humans can compete with. Their rank is rated at grade C, but they are no weaker than monsters of rank B. Yuri asked, then what about their king? The guy said there was some information about him. Then someone said that yes, he knows the information. Probably, an a rank performer in a neighboring city tried to challenge the monster, but lost to him. Listening to all this, Yuri cheered up and, apparently, had already decided to take this assignment. After some time, he and Lime left the guild building. He told him that it was great and suggested that he defeat some ogres. Lime willingly supported his idea, but then he saw Phil, and she didn't look very happy today. She was holding a sheet in her hands and reading. She was so immersed that she didn't even notice how Yuri approached her. When he turned to her, the girl even shuddered and said that he scared her. Yuri apologized to her and said that, but it was unexpected. Is she also accepting the task of conquering ogres? Phil, she cringed all over, then pressed this sheet to herself and, rushing to the leak, shouted that she had her own circumstances. So let him leave her alone. Yuri did not expect this and looked in surprise at the fleeing girl. He thought that this way she should have her own business. He believes that he will go on this quest alone. The destination is the village of Moignello. Yuri could ask Lime to transform into a basilisk and send him there, but he does not know the exact location, since he has never been here before. And that's why he was thinking of using a carriage to get there, but, what kind of carriage is this? He saw a man standing in the middle of the road and holding a sign on which it was written that the way to the village of Moignello. Seeing this, Yuri thought that this was it and he and Phil both called out to this man at the same time. Phil lowered her head and said what a coincidence. The man, apparently, was already tired of waiting and asked if the two of them were coming or not. After that, the two of them climbed into the cart. Phil was silent all the way and looked very gloomy. Yuri thought that it seemed that she was not herself today. Phil told him that she was very sorry for what happened earlier. Yuri said that everything was fine. She must have had her own reason to say what it was. Phil said that, in truth, she's actually from this village. For some reason, her hometown has always tended to attract ogres, and she knows that fighting these monsters will be very dangerous, but still, she couldn't just sit idly and do nothing. Yuri thought he understood that. Phil said that he should also let her say that there are a lot of unusual things in her hometown. He'd better be prepared. Yuri said it was good. From himself, he thought that she had such a unique personality. I wonder what conditions she grew up in. During their journey, Yuri even managed to fall asleep in the cart. Then the man woke him up and said that they had arrived. Yuri immediately woke up and said that it was fine. Is the place of their arrival a sacred forest? Yuri started looking around in surprise and thought that he was expecting a village, but how not to look, wasn't it climbing? Phil led him forward and told him that they would reach the village when they had overcome this forest. Unfortunately, the carriage is not able to pass through it, and that is why they will have to make their way further on foot. And he should also be careful and watch where he steps, because venomous snakes are not uncommon in these places. After a while, Phil told him that they were there. This is her native village. Yuri thought how unfamiliar I was with the scene. There were houses on top. 
There, right in the trees, it was as if they were reunited with nature. Phil told him that they would come to the mayor about her and ask about the situation. They might get some information about their quest. Yuri did not argue with her, because he understood that the girl was right and said that it was good. But then a man fell right in front of them. He hurt himself very badly. Yurik came up to him and asked if he was okay. The guy didn't pay any attention to them, started swearing very rudely at the woman who was standing upstairs. He asked what the hell was that? What the hell is she doing? The woman is also very rude. She began to send him far away. She told him that she wasn't desperate enough to rely on a talentless person like him. This woman's name is Hilda Arnett. Race, human, gender, female and age 102 years. Yuri thought it was 102 years old. He sees a person who has lived for more than 100 years one time. Hilda started throwing things at this guy and told him to get out. Yuri looked at the fleeing guy and thought that, despite the fact that she is more than 100 years old, she was able to defeat the young guy. What a wife is a wonderfully powerful grandmother. Then Hilda looked down and saw Phil. She said why are they standing there, let them get up. After they got up, Phil told Yuri that it was her grandmother. Hilda thanked him for taking care of her granddaughter. She turned to her granddaughter and said that she had matured since their last meeting. Phil asked that she wasn't serious, was she? Hilda said no, I'm sleeping eating the smell of a real lady. Phil started sniffing herself and asked, what is it? Hilda said that in any case, is her Yuri a good guy? Phil blushed and started shouting that no, her comma is not so. Yuri is not like that. Yuri asked her if he was really not a good guy. Phil said he didn't understand. He's a good man, he takes care of her all the time. Grandma laughed and said that she thought so, it was possible not to hide it. Phil said the two of them were terrible. Then Hilda got down to business and said that she seemed to guess. Why did she come back to the village? And let her let you say in advance. She shouldn't do that, because she's weak right now. Phil asked why. Grandma said that a man can't beat Kishin. If they try to defeat him, they will be punished by God, that is, by this monster himself. It first appeared 30 years ago. The brave adventurers who heard rumors about him tried to defeat him. However, no one could defeat him, so they had to lie with this monster side by side. Eventually, they started worshipping him. Even if she went, it would be pointless, because it would just make him angry. Yuri thought that it seemed that this was the reason she kicked out that adventurer. Then the grandmother turned to her granddaughter. She said that if she valued the life of at least this guy, then she should put aside thoughts of fighting this monster in this village. Phil got up and said that everything would be fine. After all, Yuri can defeat anyone. Hilda said that nothing less was expected from her granddaughter's chosen one. He's obviously not like other men. Very well, if she thinks so highly of him, then she will give him a test. If he can handle it, then she will personally take him to the demon god Gorge. 